got the blessing of the video create video game creator and everything to come and do some writing for us and everything film it get it out there get it edited everything yeah we're gonna turn this into a bloody franchise and then covid yeah <laughs> And welcome back to another episode of Six and Below. This week we're on a journey to the monster realm, is it? Um, Somewhere. With this crazy bitch. Um, I'm Eric, this is Darren. Welcome into Six and Below Movie Podcast. Cue the intro. So, Monster World. All right. He loves the video game movies, this bird. And us. Definitely so. What, Resident Evil, Monster Hunter. What else is there? Mortal Kombat. Oh, yeah. A, well, a fella done Mortal Kombat, yeah. Yeah, the director. But, yeah. yeah, so if you don't know, her fella, or husband, is who, Eric? Um, Paul W.S. Anderson, who happens to also be the director of this film, also directed her in most of the uh, Resident Evil films. Yeah. Um, four, I think he's directed with her in. And um, also Mortal Kombat from 1995, which we have also done on this podcast, so you can uh, you should be able to check it out on our channel definitely, as well. Definitely, definitely go check it out. Well, yeah, so he seems to really love his video game ones, because obviously Monster Hunter, if you don't know out there, that this is based on a video game. I've never played it myself, but I believe you have. Yeah, I've played it one or two times. Um, there's a little bit of a franchise, to be honest with you, on the computer game of it. I think it's called Monster Hunter World. Instead, um, it's a little bit different than this, because you actually go out and hunt in monsters, whereas in this... You don't actually hunt a monster, do they? Not really. It's more that they're being hunted by monsters. It'd be more of a monster fighter. Yeah, and they're trying to survive. <laughs> yeah, monster survival. Yeah. Is, yeah, it just... Uh, I've never, like I said, I've never played the games. I, I, I do this with quite a lot of the films we've done when we've done like video, other than maybe Mortal Kombat, because we did Werewolves Within, which was one of our first podcasts. Yeah. And that was obviously based on a, on a game that we never played. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was actually, wasn't it? That was the game as well. Yeah, um, but with this that? one, yeah, I've, I've never played the game, but I've, I've heard good things. I've heard it's got good reviews, and obviously, it must have a good fan base for them to have someone to have outlaid some money to, to have made a film about it. So I'm not really going to be able to compare this with whether it holds up to how you know the game, whether the, the fanboys out there are going to have, have liked this film, or but judging the fact that it's um, it, the the rating, which means that we can obviously do it on this podcast. Yeah, I'm going to assume that. Maybe it didn't get a good, good. Um, it wasn't received very well by the fans of the game. Maybe I was thinking this is that same thing. I was going to say it as well because, like you say, if you're comparing them, that's the problem. Is that when you do a game, especially what's been like a game franchise which is out there, then you make it into a film. Yeah, you've got the hardcore fans of that game who have basically played six or seven games throughout the years, and if you're making a film and it's not true to the game, then you know, they're going to be upset, aren't they, straight away? Hard to do. Like, to be honest, I, I don't see... Like I say, I've not, I've not played the game, but I know kind of the premise to it. Um, So I imagine it would be a hard one to try and bring to the to the to um, to a live-action film. But, you know, there's there have been some successful ones. Like, some of the Hitman ones aren't that bad. That's since Creed was good. Was it? Yeah, I thought that was actually quite good. I like that one. What got would... Prince of Persia as well. Yeah, that's Jake Gyllenhaal in it. Yeah, and I think the best one of all... Probably the Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, yeah. The one from last year, 2023. Yes, yeah. that is wicked. I love that one. Not the Bob Hoskins one, no. No, no, that's a bit uh, a bit, <laughs> bit out there, isn't it? We could probably do that on this podcast, to be fair. Um, I think it might be on our list. Do you reckon? It, I think it is. I didn't. I actually <laughs> watched that not long ago, and it, it was as bad as I remember. Uh, uh, got to do the clip quiz then, get straight into it. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Right. So for the ones who are new to Six and Below podcast, we are a movie podcast that we rate films what are rated below 6 on IMDb or below 60% on Rotten Tomatoes. Right, and let's get into the clip quiz, yes. which is basically it's a line or a famous quote from a previous film starring one of these actors right here. I think you can probably guess straight away who it might be. But if you know what film it is, let us know down below. We will give the answers out at the end as well. So stay tuned for that. Lilu Dallas Multipass. Yeah. Multipass. Uh, multipass. You know that's a multipass. Lilu Dallas, my wife. We're newlyweds. Just met. Multipass. You know how it is. Bump into each other. Sparks multipass. happen. Yeah, she knows it's a multipass. Yeah, anyway, we're in love. You reckon you know? 
Oh, I know that definitely straight away. Yeah, yeah. That's I think film. the second guy came in, you kind of recognise what film that'll be off straight away from when it was the uh, Lilo Dallas multi pass. I, I knew it, mate. I knew it. <laughs> I really just—I I almost said it then, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, don't don't don't, go, don't spoil yeah. it just yet. So please watch all the way through. Watch to the end. At the end, we will reveal obviously what that film is um, and who the actress is and who the actors are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so yeah, just stay tuned to the end, please. Yeah, right, let's get straight into the vitals then for this. Yes. Oh, uh, before we start as well, a uh, spoiler alert. Um, so yeah, there we go. Yeah, if you've never seen the film, by the way, we are going to be giving it away because we do go through scene by scene, scene and pretty much roasting it where it needs roasting our credit where it needs credit. And I think there's quite a lot of credit personally. However, you know, Eric is a little bit different. Well, there's a little bit of a story behind this one. Just to mention, right? So when we came to watch this film, it was a uh, obviously we're in the UK. We watched it on Channel Four. It was showing on Channel Four, so <laughs> we watched it. And then when I came to do my second watch, Channel Four had decided to take it down. Yes. So I've not actually been able to watch it again. So I've only seen it once. So I've basically been having to do um, the movie and all my notes from kind of memory. And I'll be honest, there were some parts of the film when I was watching it originally and not taking notes that I kind of zoned out of. <laughs> So I'm hoping, I'm hoping to God, because you did get a couple of watches. In, yeah, you? I've watched it twice. Yeah. So, uh, and you probably paid more attention than me. So I'm hoping that you're going to be able to fill in some of my gaps. It's more towards the end of the film. So yeah, when we get there. So if I, if I suddenly start dazing out towards the end of like the talk through, that's why, because he's not done research. I basically, basically I, I didn't get, I didn't get my, do my second watch and take my notes. It's usually my second watch when I break it down and I go through it, see my scene, yeah. write me notes. So I'm a bit lacking, like I say. But anyway, let's get into the vitals. Darren, take it away. Right, okay, the vitals for this film, released in 2020. Um, I will be honest with you, year 2020, does that ring any bells? It does a little bit. There was something that happened. Now. I believe it, I don't believe it was a very good year for a lot of people. So, especially films. Yes, especially films. Yes. And I will be honest with you. If this film came out a year earlier, it probably would have done a hell of a lot better. I don't know, you know. For sure. Well, box office wise, because I'm not expecting good returns for this in the box office, but. In yeah, I'll go through all that for you in a second. Yeah, go. So, runtime, one hour and 40 minutes. IMDb, 5.2. Metacritic, 47. Rotten Tomatoes, critics, 44. Audience, 70. Budget? Yeah. What do you reckon the budget was? A lot of CGI, so that adds a hundred million. A lot million. of CGI. That adds a hundred million straight away. I'm going to say 160 million. Hmm. Close. 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 I'm a close for one, so you're taking the piss. No, take a one off. 60 million. 60 million budget. Really? Yeah. But that's CGI. They've done full 60 million, considering paying the wages. Basically, there wasn't really, there was only one other big name other than Mila, wasn't there? Yeah. And there was only two actors throughout the whole. Well, three quarters of the film, anyway. So there's not oh, like yeah, a yeah. lot going on wages, I suppose. But the CGI, I thought it was like amazing in this. The monsters and stuff. I thought it was fantastic how they've done it. To be fair though, yeah, the, you know, the CGI was brilliant. You can't mm. you cannot fault the CGI in this film. Um but to be honest with Mila, although she's probably the most well known, maybe other than Ron Ron Perlman, is it? Mm. Um, in this the most screen time. To be honest, with her husband kind of directing and stuff like that, they're probably taking some money off the back end. Yeah, producers stuff and all. Well, that, it's not it? just that he he has directed it. He he also had a hand in writing the screenplay and everything like that. So they've had their hands in many different pockets, many pies for this film. Yeah, so box if it did gross. make any money, yeah, box office gross. <laughs> yeah, go on. forty two million. So no, they made a loss. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! But to be fair though, COVID though, twenty twenty, this film obviously would have been a theatrical theatrical release. So yeah, it's not going to. Be... <laughs> that kind of makes sense a bit. So they've gone like, right, we've got this big film. It's all set in six months' time. What happens in May? What down? <laughs> I can I can envision it now coming home saying, Mila, Mila, I know you love doing them them video game movies. We I've just secured the rights to Monster Hunter. We're starting filming next week. We've got Ron Perlman. We've got Ti on board. We've got we're going out into the desert we've got all this we've got the best cgi team yeah. in the world and everything like that you've got that we've got the blessing of the video create video game creator and everything to come and do some writing for us and everything film it get it out there get it edited everything yeah we're going to turn this into a bloody franchise and then covid yeah <laughs> 
Right, okay. So, top grossing films of this year is a little bit off. Yes, I Okay, because obviously cinemas are very, very quiet. Can I have a guess? In certain countries. <laughs> in certain countries. So, top grossing film. I've got to tell you this straight up. Right, okay. Three of the top films, I only recognize one of them. Okay, go on. <laughs> okay, the first one is called The 800. The 800? Yeah. The 800? Yeah. Okay, never heard of it in my entire but life. That made 461 million. The second one is called Demon Slayer. All right. Okay, 453 million. Well, I just had a quick look. The 800 is a 2020 Chinese historical war drama. So it sounds like basically not China to, not to get like, released a virus. Spiratorial. I was going to say not to get too then, spiratorial. <laughs> and then just put out a lot of their big blockbusters in China. Um, the third one, though. Is uh, starring Will Smith. Oh, 2020? Yeah. King Richard? No. Also yeah. starring Martin Lawrence. Bad Boys. Bad Boys for Life. Bad Boys. Did that come out in 2020? Yeah, it must have came out just before COVID hit because it was 426 million. Good timing then, isn't it? Yeah, they must have been like right on it. What was, what, what was number two? What did you say that was? Uh, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer. Yeah. Never heard of it either. I have not. This movie was ranked 40th. 40. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, I was looking so through the even, list. So even in a bad year, it was like, it was, it was having a bad year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, the problem is, when I was looking through the top 100, right, or top 200, normally I scroll through films and it's like films that I recognize. I think, okay, this film be this in the rankings. Yeah. Because obviously COVID, with everything that happened, I was scrolling through the top 200. There was only one other film that I actually recognised what came out in the same year as this, <laughs> at this beat, and it's called Bloodshot. Is with that the Vin one with Diesel. Vin Diesel in? Yeah. I think that can be on our list. Uh, I think I've come across it. I've not seen it, but I think that's like a 5.4 or something. I will be honest with you, I quite enjoyed it when I've seen it. What's it about? Um, it has like um, some type of implant or something <laughs> where it has... Different powers. Of, so powers. I, I, I can't even know, to be honest with you. I can't really bloody remember it. But yeah, it was all right. It's a bit like a cyborg type thing. 5.7 on IMDb. Oh, there we go. I'll put it on the list then because it's worth You thought it watching. was all right? I liked it. Um, John, let us know who it's directed by, written by, and who it stars. Yeah, so as we've mentioned, it's um, it's written, well, it's directed, sorry, by Paul W.S. Anderson. So films he's known for, um, Mortal Kombat from 1995. So again, we have done that one. Uh, we've reviewed that one. He was one of the first ones we did, so yep. check that out. Um, Resident Evil, he's done four movies in total. And as we mentioned, you know, it's his wife in them ones. Yep. Um, Aliens vs. Predator. Ah, oh, right, yeah. Uh, Event right. Horizon from 1997, which I've mentioned, I think, when we discussed him on, on Mortal Kombat, you know, that, that's one of my favorite horror movies. Ah, yeah. Only because it scared the absolute shite out of me when I was a kid. <laughs> um, Death Race. 2008 with um, Statham. With Statham, yeah. yeah. With a whisperer. Yeah. And then um, Pompeii from 2014. I don't, I've seen that. I I, I I looked at it and I was like, I, I recognize that. I recognize that film. But it's got um, uh, Kit, Kit, what's it? Yeah, John, John Snow. Yeah, yeah. John Snow out of um, Game of Thrones. I think he, he came, I think that film was released like when he was like the height of his fame with Game of Thrones and stuff yeah, like that. But yeah. I didn't realize he, he was the director for that. Um, writers, uh, I, Paul W.S. Anderson, as I mentioned before, so he had a hand in writing this. And then I'm going to absolutely fuck this name up because I'm absolutely terrible with names. Uh, Kaname Fukoa, who was the creator and uh, the director and everything of the Monster Hunter games. Yep. So he did some of the writing in it as well. Um, so it's good that they brought him on board. Yep. And then the film is starring um, Mila Jovovich, Jonovich, Jonovich. I can never say her surname, but this bird uh, yeah um obviously ding she'll show up here at some point uh tony jar as the hunter fella which yeah. is also this guy here do you know what else he's in i do recognize him but i come back huh? ong back ong back ong back ong back ong back yeah what's that about it's um it's a thai film but it's like really like big film i think it's three of them now ong back what does yeah. ong back mean um uh, it's like thai fighting Oh, so it's kung fu film. Yeah, yeah, a bit like kickboxer, but Thai fighting and stuff. I was gonna say I did get that vibe from him. Yeah, little, yeah. Little he's quite Asian, big in um, Thailand. Little Asian fella. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's a it's a bit petite. of a cliche in it. He's petite. 
Then we have Ron Perlman as the Admiral. Oh, the um, Admiral Chimp. He did look like a monkey. It's them mutton chops. I think you said to me when we were chatting about it the other day, it's the mutton chops that do it. He just looks like a, a fucking chimp. Yeah, I mean, so when we put his picture up, instead of using IMDb, we used a screenshot from this film. Yeah, I was half but, expecting him at one point to start slinging his shit at fucking... <laughs> what's her name in it? Artemis. That's her name in yeah. it. Um, just start slinging the shit at Artemis. Well, to be honest, I did. Did was it was he just me or did you sit through like an hour of this film thinking, "Oh, Ron Perlman was in this"? We well, seen at the start. You see him like for like one frame at the start, <laughs> um, and then you don't see him again until literally an hour in. No, oh, that's it. And he, he definitely does look like a chimp just in day to day when he's wearing a suit like to the Brit Awards. It looks like a bit primate, doesn't it? He does. But now, like you say, with the mutton chops and that. <laughs> Mate, it's just them mutton chops. Yeah, definitely. They just like, the way they just go down his face. And he just, oh my God. He he looks like a baboon. He is he is a baboon. Ron Baboon Perlman. <laughs> so he also stars um, Tip T.I. Harris. Yay. Yeah, so he's, he's he keeps cropping up in loads of things. Ant-Man. Or was he an Ant-Man, was Ant-Man it? Ant-Man 2. I, I say he keeps cropping up in loads of things, but... He does. He does seem to be having cameos. Yeah, he's one of his mates. Uh, one of the um, security guys. Yeah, one of the security guys. He's one of his mates in that. Oh, he, right. he only has like small roles in these films, kind of like he does in this. But yeah, he does seem to be cropping up in quite a few. Uh, but I believe he was a rapper at one point. Yeah, real good songs. The only one I know is that um, that one he did with Rihanna, where he's like, <laughs> "So live your life." Chasing that paper. Live your life. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that was Maya, him. He, Maya, <laughs> That's like the only fucking one I, I know of him. Um, then we've got Megan Good as a Dash, which I didn't even know she had a name in it. But the only reason I mentioned her is because she was in Shazam. She's, um, you know, she plays the little girl, like the grows up, you know, yes. the, the grown up version of the little Dahlia. girl in Shazam. Yeah, the one with the, in, in the Shazam we reviewed again. Go and watch that one. Um, the one who goes against the kittens. Yeah. Yeah, so her. Um, well, she's only in it for like a couple of scenes, really, right, right at the beginning. What's her name? Dash. Her name is Dash in the film. All right, yeah. According to the cast list, anyway. Yeah. But her name it. in real life is Megan Good. I've named one of the other ones myself, Spyglass. Spyglass? Yeah, because she has like that little thingy on her head. Is she the one that whistles? Yeah. The whistler. Yeah. Spyglass. Yeah. I'll go on Spyglass later on, so when we Fair speak enough. to her. But yeah, anyway, so we'll get straight into the film then, shall we? Yeah. Right, it opens up with a quote. Eric, what was the quote? Uh, I was brought here to watch films, not read. No, the, no, it actually said, it's entirely possible that behind the perception of our senses, new worlds are hidden, of which are to- we are totally unaware. Ah, I was trying to get you out then, because I didn't think you'd have it written down. <laughs> ah, I probably messed it up. But, yeah. No, no, yeah. So what do you make of that? <laughs> Fuck you, buddy. I don't know, I don't know what Pretty I just much. read, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, and as soon as that goes away, we see an old galleon ship sailing through the desert when two giant demons-looking monsters start to attack from underneath the sand. We find out these are called Diablos. Um, one of his ship crew members gets knocked out and overboard. A couple get killed, and then the ship just buggers off real, doesn't it? A ship on the sands? Because at first, that was... Because it's quite dark, the scene, isn't yeah. it, the way they've done it? And it's obviously it's sailing literally across the sand, but the way the sand's kind of like... It's got dunes and stuff like that. It kind of looks like the sea. So at first I'm like, are they sailing on the sea? I'm like, that's, that's sand. What? What yeah. is that about? I, I liked it the way they did it, though. Is that a part of the game? Pass. Because I was wondering if that... And then we, then we see... Because uh, this is where we see Ron, Ron Perlman, the, the monkey, for a bit. Yeah. And I think the only thing he does in it that I can remember is like kind of holding two ropes. On a, as, as the ship gets attacked. Yeah, and you see somebody going flying around, somebody gets stabbed in the horns. It was weird, though, because, like, the hunter fella, we see, we kind of see him for the first time, don't we, in, on the ship, and he's the one that falls overboard mm. into the sand. Because, like you say, he gets attacked by one of the Diablos. Um, but I then kind of went through most of the film then. Like, I forgot all about that scene. Until we meet them again, like a lot later on down the yeah, film. Yeah, you do because it is a long time before we do meet them again. I completely forgot that this scene even happened because it's just it's just out of nowhere. It's just literally, it is a, like a pirate galleon ship. The only way you can just it, it's literally like the bloody the Blackbeard. ship, huh? Blackbeard. What? Blackbeard. 
black but yeah it's like black bear yeah. ship it is the pirate ship but on sun so yeah that was that was just a bit weird and i was like yeah anyway i think it looked cool though but like i say i didn't put cool. two and two together that was hunter on the first watch no because I didn't. the next scene it cut straight to an unknown location and the driving like modern day vehicles it's two army vehicles traveling through a desert it looks obviously a little bit more flat ground doesn't it the one we've just seen and they're looking out for a missing patrol group. Yeah. Um, it does give us the, uh, the the longitude and latitude coordinates. Yeah. I think when I read some trivia on it, it is supposed to be somewhere in Afghanistan near Kabul. Right. Um, according to the coordinates. But yeah, so, because um, if I remember right, she stood on the side of the road. So we, we meet Artemis, who's yeah. kind of the lead ranger. Um, and the looking for the... Is she playing a recording of... Yeah, it's a voice recording of the Bravo team being attacked. Was it Bravo team? Yeah. I, I wrote Bravo team down, but I was like, was it Bravo team? Yeah, because that's what they're the trying to do, to try and find Bravo team that's gone missing. Yeah. Um. So they've gone out on like um, a tour to obviously secure perimeters or whatnot, and then they've been attacked and then disappeared. But how did she get the recording? Unless, unless like they broadcast it somewhere. Maybe they were broadcasting it on the radio. Has she got some kind of personal connection to someone in Bravo team? Because... She has a ring, doesn't she? I was going to mention, yeah, because later on, she gets the ring out. Yeah. Does she get the ring out at the beginning? I think she puts it away when shit's about to go south. Yeah. I don't know if she had it on her finger, then she put it away. Um, and then gets it back out, looks at it again, then puts it away. But it does focus on it quite a bit, doesn't it, when she does do that? Do you know them? No, they were driving one of them, like, sand dune things. Because they seem very impractical. The fact that they're not armored. So, so, so... Yeah, what, I load up the guys are in a Humvee, which is an arm. Yeah, they weren't armored vehicles, were there? But they had a big like chain gun on the back of it. Yeah, so <laughs> like he's in like a sand buggy with a big, like you say, chain gun, like a big fifty cal on the back. Now, if you were going into an active war zone, the last thing I'd want to do is be in this little sand buggy because he's literally got no protection on it at all. All it is is just tubing. Yeah. Um, and with a big ass engine on the back. So yeah, you'd be quick to get away. And I imagine it's quite quick through sand and stuff like that, but it's not going to offer you any protection and out in the open desert. All it's going to take is someone with a, a good sniper shot. Yeah. And that's, and that's easily done, isn't it? And Let's gone, be honest. Mate, and you're gone. Um, they find a few tracks on the ground where Bravo teams just disappeared. They've been driving down and it's just disappeared. Then a huge storm starts approaching the team from in the distance. That's to try and drive. I don't, did they drive towards it or did they drive away from it? I think they try and drive away from it, if I remember rightly, because, I mean, I'm not being funny. I remember that sandstorm was absolutely fucking massive. It was I mental, mean, wasn't it? I would have shit my little army trousers right there, and then there would have been a stink in that. I, I'd, I'd, to be honest, I'd want to get in the um, in the little buggy because at least I wouldn't be stuck in with the smell of my shit. <laughs> <laughs> because that thing coming, I mean, it was thunder and lightning and all sorts in there. Because yeah. straight away you're gonna be thinking that ain't fucking normal. In fact, I've got an image of it up here now. I'll put I'll put a little video up here because it is. It looks like a fucking giant tidal wave of sand coming towards. Yeah. It reminded me from the mummy. Yeah. No, I remember it's... the big sandstorm that was chasing them through the desert. It was a yeah, with like, like the face of the the, the mummy yeah. guy on it. Because the other thing as well is, it's like it's almost. As we as we kind of get towards the end, it's almost like this sandstorm is a recurring thing that's happening in this lo this particular location yeah. in the world. And you think that I don't know, maybe some locals or some scientists or someone at some point would have kind of noticed this fucking giant tidal wave of sand. Well, at least on a satellite it. thing. That's what I mean. No, the weather people pick it up. And I mean. Afghanistan, I imagine at this point that it's supposed to be, is an active war zone, hence mm. why the US military are even there. So, yeah, they're probably going to have satellites or, or um, UAVs and all sorts, you know, all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> and no one's noticed this giant fucking sandstorm coming towards you every fucking <laughs> 10 minutes. Because even later on, when, uh, when, when she does get back, I know I'm kind of jumping ahead a bit, again, sandstorm comes like it's like it's 10 minutes later, right on time, guys. Here it comes. Yeah. And then them weird pillars in the sand as well. What the, what were they about? Um, they look a bit like rune stones. Yeah. So when the electrical storm was going over, it looked like it was powering these stones to make the portal. So as they was driving, they've then started to flip out there. So they start driving through the storm itself, and then they fall off a cliff, which then starts going a little bit of a slow mo. As the truck starts flipping around, um, they come back into. A similar desert not the same desert but in a different location wasn't it yeah it all completed the thing because they went off a cliff and then next minute they're in 
clearing in the middle of a desert. There's, like, there's no cliffs or anything near them, is there? No, because them, them ruins, were they lighting up blue as well? Yeah. Because they had like... They had like, like uh, electric blue. Yeah, because they had like writing or something on them. Yeah. And they were kind of, Yeah, they were lighting up blue like the lightning. But like you say, then, then it's kind of almost like Wizard of Oz style bloody... Definitely. We're not in Kansas anymore going into a bloody tornado <laughs> or something. And then, then all of a sudden they, they're landing in, in a, a different location. And... I think they're all kind of freaking out, aren't they? Saying, you know, where the hell are we? Yeah, this isn't this isn't where we were. We were like, aren't they saying like, the, 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 no mountains? There should be mountains here, or something no, like that. Yeah, but or the, my... at the same time, though, if a big desert storm has just gone through a desert, like you say, deserts don't really have a lot of landmarks, do they? No. Like every single June looks exactly the same. That's why <laughs> so many people get lost in the desert. Well, yeah, yeah, and. Yeah. We a big storm coming on that kind of like pushes some of the dunes, especially when it was that big. So when you come around out of a storm, you're thinking, oh, that looks a bit bigger than what I remember it being or anything. So kind of, yeah, it's a bit like one of them, isn't it? You can forgive them a little bit because there is a massive like literal sky tower there as well. Oh, that you true, see in yeah. the distance. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about so you'd that. You'd be like, yeah, that, that wasn't there before. <laughs> or, or then again, you know, I could. I am the type of person where I could probably drive through a desert and not notice a bloody massive sky tower in the distance. Yeah, yeah, so, I think you would, mate. I think you would. But I don't know if I was if I was on heightened alert like these guys are in the middle of a war zone, then maybe I would have paid attention to it a bit more. But yeah, you'd probably remember it. But the fact that as well, a couple of times in this film, they're inside the like Humvee or yeah. the little jeep or whatever, or whatever you want to call it, the sandbox. And they get flipped around and tossed about and everything like that, and everyone's just fine. Yeah, there's no scratches or anything, is there? No. I mean, I know they're, like, wearing helmets and, like, body armor and stuff like that, but you can still <laughs> break an arm or something or cause some kind of injury, but everyone seems to be fucking fine. Yeah. And one of the guys goes on top to do a bit of a recon, and as he looks 10 yards away across the other side of the tune, what would you know? There's Bravo team, all burnt out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I did notice a little uh, continuity goof that as well, though. I don't know if you noticed it. Um, at one point, they um, when they land, <laughs> the little sand buggy is upside down, and yeah. the guys rock it back over. Yeah. But then when it kind of when the when they get the wide shot, then when they're walking up the dunes, the buggy's back on its roof again. Yeah. So I, it's like in as you know, in like in so I think they're just trying to make it more like a video game where you know sometimes glitch it glitches. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the word I'm looking for. It's it's glitching out, mate. There's a glitch in the Matrix right there. Definitely. Uh, one thing that didn't make me laugh about this feel or made me think, what the hell are you talking about? So they mentioned that the heat was so hot, it melted sand into glass. Yeah. Okay. One of the guys asked, how do you melt sand? And Armitus Ar answers, I don't know. Is that the actual dialogue? That is the exact dialogue. How do you melt sand? Artemis answers, I don't know. Um, I just thought to myself, well, maybe you melt sand into glass by using fire and heat. Yeah, that would be like my go-to. Yeah. You know, glass is sand heated up. I mean, I know she's Literally, like... Literally, your I... glass window <laughs> on, on your car, you're driving through the desert, is made of sand. I know, but the other clue as well would have been, you know, I don't know, the burnt corpses, the yeah. burnt cars, the burnt every fucking thing around you. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God, they've made glass. How have they made glass? And oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Maybe they should have, I actually wound it back and actually put subtitles on to make sure I was hearing it right. How do you melt glass? Uh, <laughs> a bit of heat, mate. <laughs> I'm going to say, yeah, something hot. <laughs> um, I kind of get what they're saying because they do, I f don't, they, don't they kind of like, speculate oh maybe it's a flamethrower or something yeah to start saying but, that but that can't generate enough heat for the yeah but the even so it's sand. like it's obvious like something really really hot has gone there not just not just ignoring the fact that there's sand and glass but the fact that the bodies are charred the car the humvee that you're in was charred the the vehicle everything basically everything we just black and charred and almost dust yes exactly and so, the discover as well don't let the compass and the electrics are not working yeah. That war chant to keep doing. I read a little bit of trivia, right? Yeah. About this. Um, that apparently was review bombed in China because I think I, I could be, at this point, I couldn't like rewatch the film to find out where it was, but it, I think it was something to do with one of the chants they were doing it was almost deemed racist. And so it was review bombed in China. Right. Is it something to do with like a war or some sort? Um, no. Let me see if I can just find the trivia. Um, but. 
I heard that's what it was, so I'm not sure whether it kind of affected the UK, kind of, whether it was IMDb or whether it was just literally in China. But let me just find a bit of trivia. Yeah, no, I'll uh, carry on anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it zooms out and we meet Hunter for the first time, standing on a mountain, watching Artemis and the crew. Uh, they come to a stop as they notice big giant bones. Um, kind of like a giant blue whale, doesn't it? Yeah, at that point, I would have like, I would have been thinking, what the fuck's going on? Because you just, it was bigger than a blue whale. It was, no, like, it was like that type of thing. Yo, it was yeah, like yeah. a rib cage or some sort, but it was huge. Yeah, it was fucking massive. Massive. And, um, yeah, the country starts has noticed these big giant bones. Um, Hunter fires an arrow hitting the bone to warn the crew of danger as the, dialogue, uh, as the Diablo has came back and starts giving chase under the sand. Um, they learn that the thing is... Wow. How many how many times did they shoot at this bloody Dia, Diablo? I know. I did, um, I did put that in my notes because um, they're shooting at it a lot when it's coming through the sand. But even when later on when they abandon the cars and they're running away from it, the amount of ammo they're shooting at the thing. And it's like, just save your ammo because it's not slowing it down. <laughs> it's not stopping it in the slightest. It's not even... It, the Diablo doesn't even... I don't even think it realizes it's being shot at. No, it didn't even flinch whatsoever. It's got a 50 cal getting hit. It's got a chain gun hitting it. Yes. They're just umping firing at this thing. And it's like... Exactly. He was just like, you may as well, uh, like, uh, you may as well just throw gravel at the thing. It'd be <laughs> like some, it'd be like a tiny little person coming up to you and picking up like some little sand and throwing at you. Yeah, that's that's basically the extent of what d- damage it did to this massive thing. And I mean, like, if you're listening on Spotify, this this thing compared to the guys was huge. It was like, why would you compare? Story building. Yeah, it'd be like, yeah, it'd be like being attacked by a six story building, but. What what's the deal with the hunter guy, right? Yeah. Why why did he fire an arrow at them with dark? Was he trying to warn them? So yeah, red for danger. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, so he's fired it and it's hit the rib the like the rib cage yeah. above where they were. So the dust then comes down onto him. But if somebody fired an arrow at you from distance and it hit up there, would you turn around and start automatically unloading your full clips into where that guy is? Americans for you, mate. Shoot first, ask questions later. That's all I can say. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you would you would be thinking the guy's literally firing a bow and arrow at you. Yeah, Not and you just go, you. over there. All clips into the guy. Like, it's like, chill. it's almost like they don't like having bullets on them and they're just trying to get rid of them as quickly as possible. Yeah. And I think they must think, oh, the less I have, the less weight I have to carry. Yeah. How many but, times did you actually see them reload? Not once. That I can recall. <laughs> and... Where, where exactly were they putting all these bullets? Because the amount they fire. It's ridiculous. I mean, later on, again, they get, the, the cars get a bit, take a beating from the Diablo, don't they? As they're kind of being chased by it. Yes. Yeah, so How that's... good were them graphics, though, mate, when it was coming through the sand? I loved it. When it was going down and coming back up, and then it was just like walking, chasing after them. Just that initial shot when you just see, see the sand kind of flying off, and you're like, what the hell is that? And I think it comes to like a wide angle, almost yeah. like a drone shot. And you just you just see them tiny in their little like Humvee and stuff, and they coming through the sand. It just look it did look amazing. And when it breaks through the sand to start with, and it just hits the Humvee, done it with its horns, just like just like a bull, basically. Yeah. When you see them at rodeos, where the bull just rams everybody. What I mean, the CGI and the detail on the monster. Yeah, cause I mean, this is where the first guy got killed, wasn't it? Straight away, because as it <laughs> flips the car, one of the guys just. Gets knocked completely, squashed literally by the car. I was wondering a bit about the timing because it does, it catches up to them and it hits the cars. And then what does it do? Just go for a quick fag break while while they mess about trying to get some guy out of the car. Because yeah. One minute it's on them and he's like, it's, it's knocking the cars out. And the next it's, they have time, one of the guys has time to run over and start helping the guy out. And then they start and then they have, they have a fag break and the monster has a fag yeah. break. And then it's like, you know what I mean? I found that a uh, piece of trivia, by the way. Oh, yeah. We move on. So. It was a. Uh, it says this is on. This is from IMDb. On yeah, the yeah. Trivia. It was, uh, not long after its theatrical release in China, the film was pulled from cinemas and subsequently banned because a joke in the film was insulting. The joke was, "What are my knees? What kind of knees are these? Chinese." This Who caused. Says that? I don't know. That's what I mean. I, by the time I read this, I couldn't go back to listen to the dialogue to see when it was said, but I don't remember it being said, other than possibly being in some one of the chants, maybe that they were singing. No, it wasn't anything like that. Unless it was just in the Chinese version of the film, the way it had been dubbed, maybe it was put in. But it does say the 
This caused the film to be review bombed on several platforms and it even received accusations of racism. Curiously, the game Monster Hunter World received thousands of negative reviews as well within 48 hours, which were not aimed at the game itself, but on the film. Uh, Constant, Constantin Films, who I think is the production company film, later apologised for the scene which was removed from all subsequent versions. It was removed then. It, yeah, oh well, yeah, obviously then. So obviously the version we've watched, but but I was wondering about whether, because with it saying it was review bombed on several platforms, would that have been the likes of IMDb and possibly yeah, uh, Rotten Tomatoes and stuff? Would they take into uh, account like Chinese reviews, or I don't know? Uh, it would do if they came onto the obviously English platform. platforms of it. All you have to do is put dot com or dot co uk in, isn't it? You on it? Uh, Chinese market is. <laughs> Huge. Look at the Avengers, how much money they make over in China. Yeah. I know Disney got a lot of criticisms for pandering to the Chinese market a bit. Yeah. Certain things. Like all the basketball players with the NBA, what's going on? A lot of people complaining about it, but that's where the money is at. Well, unfortunately, yeah. I mean, politics. Very, very, <laughs> very political. But that's not what we're about on this show. So no. let's get back to the film. So exactly. Anyway, I just thought that was a little bit of an interesting trivia that I've seen because I, I, I didn't. I probably should have read it properly. So. <laughs> ah, I keep all this in still. It's so interesting uh, to talk yeah, about. It's still, still interesting. Um, I did like this scene, actually, when yeah. one of the guys got impaled from behind. Yeah. And just as he gets impaled, the spike goes right, well, the horn goes right through his back, through his chest. And I don't know how he managed to do it because personally, I probably would have been dead. But still, he had the strength to pull the pins on his grenade belt and then drop it onto the Diablo. Really like that. I thought CGI was great when it just exploded. Yeah. But then again, same as the arrows and the bullets, it just went no. Fuck off. <laughs> it, it didn't do anything whatsoever. It's the equivalent. It's the equivalent of being pinched in it. It's just yeah. like you're just gonna be like, that was inconvenient, but let's get on with my life. Yeah. Um. But, but it went right into its mouth as well, didn't it? It had its mouth open when it done that. Yeah, and yet, like you say, it was a, it was literally a row of grenades that went into its mouth, and it just did absolutely nothing to yeah. this thing. Um, um, Hunter, he's got some bloody good aim in there, hasn't he, mate? He's gonna put bloody Robin Hood to shame. Oh, I know, I know. From distance, he's like two miles out, and he's firing these arrows with like firework on it at the end of it. So as soon as it hits on impacts, it just explodes a little bit, but like an exploding arrow. He is, he is funny the way he's kind of just jumping about between the rocks doing his. Uh, and then running off. Yeah. How many <laughs> arrows did he have, though? Because I didn't see him carrying many arrows around, actually. So at the moment, they're all inside a cave. Um, there's only four of them remaining now. Um, I can't remember all the names, but Artemis is inside. And what was that girl's name from Thing Card? What was her? What was her? Oh, yeah. Dash? What, was her, what was her name? Dash. Yeah. So Dash is panicking and freaking out. And Artemis is basically giving a little bit of a speech Saying like put all the teams together, get them all in good spirits, just saying we fight and we survive, and then bam. Yeah, because uh yeah. Straight from behind, because Dash has had everybody distracted because she's crying on the side, panicking about everyone being killed. They're in the middle of a war zone. And then some what would you call that? Was it like a scorpion slash spider or something? I think behind? I put down as a spider. But yeah, it was weird. And uh, she gets she gets impaled. Yeah. Well, Artemis, the main character, gets literally... Well, it wasn't... River. Was it not? No, I, no. It I was could... like a no, scorpion claw. Yeah. It was like that going around her. Was it? Because I yeah. thought she got impaled through like the chest. No, no it was, was like around... Well, that explains like a lot a more. Because I went through like pretty much the rest of the film <clears> thinking, <throat> she should be dead. And I'm pretty sure <laughs> she was dead. Yeah, because... but she got injected with some type of poison. So everybody thinks she's dead. Right, then everybody I, I, just left her and ran off anyway. Well, I completely missed this because, from my point of view, right, you've yeah. got you've got Dash. You come into this cave and Dash starts fucking freaking out. Yeah, I mean, she's a trained soldier and it's like the first, like, probably bit of conflict that she's been in. Mm. Yeah, it, <laughs> I mean, I would be freaking out too if I had just seen this giant Diablo and it was being chased and blah blah blah. So ignoring that, but yeah. So and then she gets bitch slapped and Artemis reminds her, you know, who's in charge and so on. But then all of a sudden. Pfft, I thought, literally, like I said, that she got impaled and like she was being held up, impaled. And yeah. I thought, I thought she was the main character. I thought she was in. I said, I, all I was thinking was, who's going to lead this now? I was T. I. The same. Is Ti going to be the main character in this film? Because yeah. if so, then he's not strong enough of an actor to lead a film. No. And I'm thinking, Dash, he's just like been crying in the corner. So there's no way she's becoming a hero. 
No, did it make you jump a little bit? It did a little bit, yeah. I, I just, I, to be honest, I was not expecting it. And even when I think Dash and Ti's character even start performing CPR on her, and I think they check her pulse and everything, and she, as far as we're concerned, she's dead, and yeah. then the rest of the team run off, then don't they? Yeah, yeah. Viva. As monsters, I think mon- I think she's on the floor like dead and monsters. Like all these spider things are kind of running over her. Yeah, they get overwhelmed really quick, don't they? They do. Like loads, like literally a hundred of them just appear out of nowhere. Just, yeah. And they're probably just... about 20 foot tall as well. Like, not exactly small things. It reminded me of like uh, like the, like the a lot of the monsters from like Starship Troopers. Ah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like the uh, like all the bugs and stuff like that. That's yeah, what it was like. that. Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, I think I agree with you there, mate. To be honest with you, um, but there was again the CGI on them was brilliant, and uh, I think one doesn't one of them get webbed as one of the guys gets webbed. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I think they're running through like a they're like running through like a canyon, aren't they? Yeah, so Marshall's canyon. lifted up and lifted up by a web, and then he's bit in half. So that's Marshall gone. Um, Hunter's still trying to help them out, yeah, firing arrows to try and like distract them or injure them. From uh, getting attacked. Nice of him. And then we see Artemis wake up uh, and he's stabbed again <laughs> by the monster. But this time she wakes up in a like a cocoon type thing, isn't it? It's the second time we see as well that I did notice. Because obviously at the beginning when Hunter falls off his ship. Yeah. And um, when you think he's dead in the sand, yeah. uh, all you see is you see a shot close up of his hand and his hand starts moving. Yeah. We get the same thing with Artemis, don't we? So it goes to her, um, her shot, uh, a shot of her arm. Switching. But yeah, and then they wake up and um what is she in there? Like is she in some kind of kind of like is it digesting her or something? She wakes up in kind of like a cocoon, like Yeah. Um I don't really know how to explain it. I don't know if you like say it might be digest because you see one of the other soldiers later on, because one of the soldiers ties the dog tags to his leg, doesn't there? Oh yeah. And yeah. you see his dog tags on his foot out of one of the cocoons, and then you see Dash see her face like sticking out of it but she's dead or poisoned or whatever inside the cocoon she's not moving and i think you see one of the other guys that as she's walking through um through like this labyrinth of dead bones all over the place so i don't know how many people go past there because there's a lot of skeletons just lying around inside this labyrinth cave that is a good point because there were quite a lot. Because when it zooms out, there was quite it was quite an intricate um, kind of like a web. hive, isn't it? Like an ant, yeah. ant hive or something like that, or ant nest, what you want to call it? Colony. Well, yeah, because they're in. Because really, when you think about it, because you see you see a shot later on, don't you? Where all they're in is they're surrounded like desert, and they're on like they're in like an island in the middle of the desert. So you always it's almost as if like let's imagine the desert was the sea. Yeah. Um, and they're on this small little kind of desert island in the middle of the desert, which yeah. is like a rocky outcrop, because obviously that's why the Diablo can't get to them because he can't come under through the sand or yeah. whatever. Um, that's a good, very good point because, like you say, it's like it's like a den of uh, like a spider's den, and there's like webs and everything over, and there's all these like sacks everywhere. So where are they getting all the other food from? How many people actually wander through, or or other things kind of wander through? Because the amount that's of freaking thinking. spiders are about the place. Because all you see in the outcrop. Is you've got the Diablo waiting for whatever happens yeah. to walk into the water slash sand, and then you have the spiders. So what else is there? Are they cannibals? Are they eating? <laughs> no, but there was a lot of human bones though. You have seen yeah. loads of human bones all over the floor. That's what I was thinking. Like, where are they getting all of these snacks? Is it like a daily occurrence where somebody's ship just goes past and somebody falls off? Maybe. Well, there, actually, no. I'm actually thinking about it. There is a massive ship graveyard there isn't there yeah i never thought of that because yeah there's it must be because there was a lot of ships there wasn't there if i remember right yeah just on one part of the island yeah <laughs> where the hell are all these people where are they living they're probably not living mate they're inside the bloody spider cave well exactly but the spiders must be doing well because there's an awful awful lot of them and to be able to fill the po- to, to be able to um feed build, population be able to feed a population that big they must be regularly being do you, th- do you think do you think the spiders and the Diablos kind of working together? He draws them into there and they finish them off. But what would the Diablo get out of it? Well, I don't know, because I can't imagine a human's going to fill them up too much. Uh, it didn't look like he was eating them either. I think he was just playing them out of them. It's a bit like a random bit of an orchid with a seal. Just coming up, like, kicking the shit out of it for the hell of it. Yeah, I suppose, because to be fair, he probably could have just finished them off like that. 
at if he wanted oh, to. Oh, yeah, easy, easy. I mean, he pretty much was playing with his food, throwing them about and all stuff like that. Like, like even when I mentioned before, like when he, he pretty much stopped for a cigarette break to, to let them... <laughs> He, he, I imagine he was probably just like, I'll just, I'll just hold back a bit. Let's, let's enjoy this. Yeah. So uh, Artemis stumbles even, around. Sorry, what were we even talking about then? I kind of feel like we got off track of that. Yeah, I was trying to get us back on. Yeah, now. sorry, go on. So Artemis is stumbling around the, uh, the cave. He manages to find a small supply bag, which has um, some flares, some bullets, and I think it has some temper of um, healing spray, I think it was, or some type of spray can, wasn't it? Or some magic spray. Yeah, so she stumbles around a little bit more with a little baggage she's just found. <gasps> and then out of nowhere, right, Lincoln appears, who's a little bit worse for wear. <laughs> a little bit worse for wear is <laughs> a, little a bit worse fucking for wear. understatement. As soon as he was with her, right, he didn't shut up complaining, right? Because obviously we know why, what happens in a minute. But he was constantly going, ah, ah, ah. But the thing is, how did he sneak up to her silently? And then not shut up once he's in scene. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it, it's like a jump scare, isn't it, when he comes? Because she's walking around and it's complete silent, pitch, pitch black as well. Got a tiny little light. Then he just appears out of nowhere and goes, ah, ah, and on the screen. So that made Leanne jump a little bit. She's like, oh my God, where did that come from? Yeah. It was like a jump scare. But very, very sneaky, sneaky. Yeah, but he doesn't shut up, though, does he? <laughs> no, he doesn't. Got to explain what happens to him two minutes later. So he's kind of, is he itching or something? And he's like, oh, what's going on here? What's going on? And he pulls his top up and there's like a load of like, what look almost like eggs or bubbles or something on his side yeah. of his torso. And then they start popping open and all these little spiders start coming out and crawling up him and start like attacking him. But they're kind of like hatching from inside his skin. And oh my God, that's literally like my worst nightmare. Have you ever seen like videos on like YouTube where people get parasites pulled out of them and stuff like that? Oh. I mean, uh, uh, no, thank you. Just get out of your microphone. I know. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Right, a... Remind me a little bit from arachnophobia. Oh, mate, yeah. Have I just. No, no, you're fine. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought I muted my mic then. Sorry. Uh, I Don't forget, I've got a child lock on your microphone. Know, I've, got child, I've been told specifically I'm not allowed to touch this because I keep breaking things. Yes. Um, yeah, shut up. <laughs> um, I did also fix it as well, so there is that. Anyway, um, that's the story from another day. But the other thing, the other thing I noticed as well that I, I remembered was, um, was you mentioned she, she picks up a little care package and so on. Yeah. But she likes a flare in the middle of the, yeah. that rhymed. And she's walking through and it's basically lighting up everything red. And it's like, and it obviously flares. Yeah, a lot of noise. You just wouldn't, would you? No. I'd rather stumble through in dim light than light a flare and try and, because for all she knew, that that was just going to attract every fucking little bug in the well, building. Well, that's exactly what happened, wasn't it? Because oh, yeah? as soon as uh, Lincoln gets killed, she starts running off. And then that little spray can she gets starts making like a homemade torch, doesn't <laughs> she? But it's like you get. St- the Lynx can basically with a lighter and like yeah, blow torch. Please. This tiny little flame coming out of here against a 30 foot spider thing. I think the spiders go like, no, mate, just knock you out. To be honest, like at this point, I'm just thinking, I don't even know how she's alive in the first place, how any of them are alive. You know, they've been cocooned. I'm surprised even Lincoln was still alive. She's been what I thought was stabbed, but obviously she wasn't, but she was poisoned. Um, she's done her leg in, though, didn't she? Because when she escapes, um, she's limping around for quite a bit, isn't she? And it's quite luckily the spiders don't like the sunlight. Yeah, so they're a bit like vampire, aren't they? As soon as going a bit of sunlight, they start getting burnt or whatever. I don't know why they're when, scared of it. When she's escaping, though, and she's using the aerosol on that spider, mm. and then she throws the bullets at them. Yeah, and then they just would that work? I would don't they? Because I know the bug was on fire and she threw it in, but did did they really get hot enough to kind of explode and? Would, would they have exploded with enough power? I, I don't know if that's just kind of something, you know, when they say, like, movie physics and movie stuff like that. Yeah. Would, would that happen? Because, obviously, when a bullet goes off in a gun, it has rifling to go down the, the barrel and yeah. go to direct in five years. But just putting it in a fire and having it blow apart, would that cause much damage? Not the temperature she was doing it at, but I think if it's high enough, then possibly. Because, like, say, yeah. it's gunpowder in the middle of it when it heats up enough. It yeah. probably some type of reaction to it, but not be 
really hot. It can't just be like your campfire. I don't think that could set it off within 30 seconds. If there's anybody out there looking at you, America. Yeah, America looking at yeah, you. Yeah, you, you, you probably have bullets over there. If, if anyone's ever thrown like some bullets into like some fire, um, just like experimenting or dicking them out or whatever, could you just leave a comment to let us know what actually happens? Do they kind of explode like they do in this film? Where, and would, 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 they, would they explode enough to cause a bullet to actually kill someone or go into someone? Ah. Well, okay. Well, what is it? So, say? according to Google, uh, fire will set the cartridge off, but the bullets will barely move as the explosions will take the least resistance and will exit through the brass case. See, that's what I was wondering because when when the bullets are in the, in the gun, they're kind of in an enclosed system, and the only the only the only release for the energy is to go out the barrel and down the barrel, and obviously the barrel then has rifling in it to go down, which spins the bullet. Yeah. And, and all that so it's it's all about the force of everything that's happening in the thing being directed down that barrel but if it's not in that enclosed system and it just heats up and explodes then i'm not sure the bullet would actually go anywhere to do anything it would just make little pops yeah so according to youtube where some hillbillies just threw some bullets <laughs> into a fire yes that is correct that's what happened um it sounded a bit like more of a chinese Firecrackers, not a case of like going here, there, and everywhere like you do see in the films. So I think it does have some context to it, but I don't think fifty cow bullet will just go off straight away the way it did. Yeah, so I don't think it'd be enough to kind of cause enough damage to a spider to be able to. Probably not. No, mate. Probably not. Maybe, maybe scare the spider off a little bit. I don't know with the loud noises, but we see Artemis stumbling around a little place here, there, pretty much everywhere around this little island. I mean, there's not many places you can go when you zoom out. The island doesn't look that big, but yet it has a lot it has of cutscenes. Has a lot going on for yeah. like a small little island. That's it. And then she comes over, finds Hunter, um, and then oh, that's, she goes to a little shipwreck, doesn't she? Like a yeah. graveyard. That's where we come across Hunter, and then the little angry Thai guy just fucking grabs her from behind. A little quite a cool fight scene, I thought. There were some good little fight scenes between the two of them, yeah. Yeah. Like, cause, doesn't she stab him as well? Yeah, she stabs him into his chest, and he turns around and says, oh, I've been helping you and everything. Oh, good for you! That's her reply. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you're the guy who's been helping us get away from all these monsters. So I'm going to stab so you. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to stab you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Women for you. <laughs> it is. I was. I wasn't gonna say that, but yeah, I was thinking it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but also you see it when she's stumbling around. She has um, on top of that the big rock. There's a couple of stones, isn't there? What like mounted up on top of each other? Where we seen Hunter earlier on when he was firing arrows towards like the whale carcass. Oh yeah, because doesn't that kind of remind her? Oh shit! Yeah, there's actually someone about here. Yeah. firing arrows. So she gets this rock, and I don't know why she thought about doing this, but if I seen some rocks on the side, the first thing that comes to my mind would not be throw the rock on the sand, see if that Diablo thing still getting about. I wouldn't have put two and two together. I mean, the fact that it was so... that the Diablo picked up one little rock being thrown in the Instantly. middle of the desert... Yeah, they managed to drive how far in their Humvees and, and trucks and all that before the Diablo came? Well, good point. And Bravo team wasn't killed by Diablo either. That doesn't blow fire. Well, no, it doesn't, no. So it, that, that kind of, that, yeah, that doesn't compute for me because like, she literally throws a pebble onto the sand and Diablo... <laughs> and there, no, instantly. I know it's about and it's obviously waiting for them, but... It kind of reminded me of Tremors. Yeah, <laughs> actually, yeah. Yeah. In fact, when 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 it first comes to them, when they're kind of driving away in the Humvee and stuff, and it's coming through the sand, yeah, that now you think now thinking back, yeah, that does remind me of Tremors. You know what? It's Tremors. a shame. It's a shame, isn't it? Right? They don't have a pile of pole vaults on the side like they did in Tremors, just randomly appear. Is that what they had in Tremors? Yeah. I can't. They were stuck on rocks, and they kept pole vaulting from one rock to the other rock so they don't touch the ground. Now I've not seen Tremors in ages. Isn't there something in that Dune movie? where it's something to do with tapping on the sand. The worm. Is that what it is? Yeah, the giant worm when it hears the, any, if, that, anything that's running or anything on the sand. Just don't they summon it? Because isn't it, don't they say in the Dune movie that like they have to, the sand, the people who live in the desert, they have a 
weird way of walking across the sand. Yeah, yeah. I've only seen that one. Um, the second one of that's out. Yeah, supposed it's, to be really good. Yeah, the first one was really good. I was impressed with that. To be fair. Yeah, but yeah, that 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 must have been where I'm kind of thinking of it because yeah, because that's the same thing like you say with the sandworm. Yeah, I wonder where he got his idea from. I wonder. I wonder. <laughs> Uh, let's get back to where we were anyway on the film. So, yeah, pretty cool fight scene that happens. Uh, Artemis stabs Hunter, think... and then she ends up getting beaten up anyway and tied up, doesn't she? The thing with that fight scene as well is, like, I know she's a, U- a ranger in the US <clears throat> Army yeah, and so on, but she does come across as a bit of a badass when it comes to karate and stuff like that. It's just, are, we, are we meant to believe that like soldiers get like highly trained in hand-to-hand combat as well? Is that a thing? Probably the basics and that, but... I mean, well, I don't think he's... a ninety-pound woman's going to be, be beating off an average dude. But saying that, because he's tight, he's not exactly the biggest frame anyway, has he? Well, it's not that. For all we know, he's grew up in this world and kind of had to train himself and everything to be able to fight kind of hand to hand like this because it's it's clearly a doggy dog world. Yeah, definitely. Um. So, well, to be fair, she doesn't beat him, so there is that. But the, it's just the way she fights, and she kind of. It's very much like a kung fu kind of fight. It's just, it just making me think: Did the army teach her this, or does she know it beforehand? Or is it just that? She, or is it just like, let's not think too much into it. She's a badass. Well, yeah. Well, you know, married to the husband, the director, and that, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, she's picked up stuff from uh, from Resident Evil because this woman has, you know, she has a bad time. First, she's fighting zombies, and she's, uh, you know, be all in the same world. Been? How else has she been in? Obviously, I don't want to give it away for the, our film club. Yeah, the film. There is, there is a very big film that she was in. Um, I'm, I swear there's something like. I swear there's something big that she was in that I'm kind of. Something thinking. similar to. I know it's not Atomic Blonde, but something that type of film I think she's been in before as well. I'll have a look. I'll have a look. Um, I should know this scene as I did the right old. <laughs> yeah, you should do, shouldn't you? Eh? You know, all that research that you do. So oh, we'll go back to Hunter's hideout. Um, Looks like he's been on the island for some time, hasn't he? Because he's made himself quite at home there, and he's got a good little shelter from them spiders coming at night time. Um, he starts drinking water in front of her. Yeah. She looks really parched, and she's dying for a drink, and he's just takes a little sip in front of her. She kicks it over. They have a nice little fight again, don't they? Um, the <laughs> next day, uh, when he wakes up, he goes out with a spyglass, just having a little scope around on the desert to see if the Diablo's still out there. Comes back in, notices uh, Armatus is not there at the moment, and he gets ambushed by her. Um, they have a little bit of a fight. Uh, did you get the feeling that they both looked batshit crazy? Do you know when someone's been isolated on their own for some amount of time, like Tom Hanks on Castaway? Yeah. Where he starts losing his mind. Yeah, yeah. They both had that look of craziness in the face when they're fighting each other. A little bit, yeah. You know what I mean, I can listen to Hunter because he's been probably on the island for a couple of weeks by the looks of it on his own. But why was she like that? Why was she so mad at him? No. I he know. saved her several times. Well, yeah, he <clears> has. <throat> and also, she's the one that kind of, when he fires that initial arrow, the chalk arrow, and kind of warn them. And she's the one that picks it up and goes chalk and tells them to stop firing at it. Yeah. And obviously, you know, I don't know, she knows that they can't, he's kind of been helping them as they go along, but got no reason to not know that. And yeah. I don't think he's given her any reason really to not think that to think that he's like a foe in a way. Yeah. And then vice I versa mean, as well. Yeah. Why does he start attacking her in the shipyard when he's just been saving her? Like, really? If if you save someone just to kill them later? Yeah. Yeah. Why didn't you let the Diablo kill them or the spiders kill them earlier and let him be done with it instead of like saving them and then fighting later on it doesn't make sense the way they were i did think it was quite funny though when she ties him up and then she starts to go and have a drink of water and he roll over like yeah. a little spoiled little brat goes ape shit don't you yeah i thought that was hilarious <coughs> like you son of a bitch <laughs> that's what i mean it was like crazy look in the face wasn't yeah. it and i quite liked it i think they've done quite well acting to be fair doesn't she go and destroys little action figures yeah she tries to yeah because what are they are they supposed to represent his like wife and kid or something i believe so yeah because obviously he doesn't speak english for any no. Um, I did notice as well that I did make a little side point as well that at no point during this does she seem to be trying to learn his language. It's because we're English speakers. We yeah. expect everybody in the world to know English. And if, and if they don't understand us, we just shout louder. Yeah. Next drink, please. Yeah. I want a drink. <laughs> I want a drink. Why don't you understand me? Oh. And then after they have a little bit of a fight, they find out they're best friends. 
<laughs> Are we best friends now? <laughs> it was, wasn't it? It was like, I like every fucking film we do. Oh my God, best friends. Oh, no. So Artemis gives him some uh, chocolate to eat and it looks like it's been in her pocket for some time. Hey, that, the way he ate that chocolate and the way he was afterwards, I, 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 I thought, was that chocolate? Was that heroin he just gave her? Because more chocolate, more chocolate, more candy, more candy. More, more, give me more. more. Um, Artemis tells Hunter that she has a weapon inside the truck in the desert which could help them kill the Diablo. <laughs> right. He basically um, calls her a stupid yeah. bitch. Hunter leads her into the termite mounds, um, which I thought this was quite a cool scene as well. So whilst they're inside, it looked like termite mounds, didn't it? And all like yeah, all around. And yeah, these like are parts. Hills on the termite mound type. Yeah. So these are part of the home or uh, the dwellings or whatever of these like little spider things what are um, trying to kill them earlier. And it turns out the spiders have a venom which they can use to poison the Diablo. Yes. So we think anyway. Uh, so we see Artemis staying, singing in the middle of the dark, um, waiting for it to go dark anyway. She's out in the middle of the umpen, singing the chant from before, it done with the army song. Um, but there's no chance she would have outrun that spider. No chance. No chance. No chance. As soon as that came out, that was hot on her heels, and the next minute she's running, does like a little dive, doesn't she, underneath the rope. And it's quite a cool, like, uh, snare trap, isn't it? So it traps the spider's leg. And then I thought this was quite a cool scene as well because Hunter jumps off like a big cliff, doesn't he, off the side, comes down with this big sword, which I thought looked pretty shit hot. Um, the sword now that he's wearing, using behind us in the background, and then it cuts one of the spider's legs off, or it's gland, I think it is, um, for where the poison is, and then they run back to their cave um, to then start doing a little bit of a bonding over the fire, don't they? Yeah, it is a pretty badass sword that I just mentioned in the sword. I mean, you can see it on the picture behind us. But I mean, it's like, it's a proper video game sword. That, oh, that sword. yeah, they've done well on it. You know, especially like in a Japanese style video games. Yeah. Like where you just have the oversized fucking massive fucking sword. Exactly like that. Final Fantasy. Yeah. But I mean, do you, do you, really, do you think, how much do you think that thing weighs? Do you think he would actually be able to hold that thing? That's more of like an Arnold Schwarzenegger style sword, that. Oh, easy, but it's it looks like it's made out of half metal and half bone. bone. The bone isn't bone's dense, not light, is it? No, is it balls? I mean, the metal alone on that thing. I'm just looking at it now. Obviously, everyone can if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it behind us. But if you're listening on Spotify, it's uh, this sword itself is probably about the size of him. Maybe, maybe just slightly smaller, but it's massive. Imagine, like, if you've ever played, like, a Japanese RPG or something, yeah. and you see, like, the giant weapons they have in that. Very much like that. And that's what he's wielding about. I imagine in the actual film itself, it was probably made of polystyrene. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It throws around above his head easy enough, doesn't it? Yeah. But is this, uh, this is when they, uh, they go to the ships, and then we, don't we get a little bit of a montage of them? Kind of training, don't they find some like swords and stuff in some of they go through, rooting through some of the ships? Yeah, I mean, they spend like an afternoon just like I don't know, thrusting swords about, kind of doing like little what's it called when you're doing like uh, you know, when you're practicing like martial arts moves and stuff and you're not fighting against anyone, be doing like what's that called? You know what I mean? Oh, uh, not you know, like wing shoe or some like yeah, that, but it? like the kind of the going, <laughs> 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 yeah, I think and just apparently. Training. Apparently, if I've learned anything from martial arts films and films like this, that if you want to be good at sword fighting or fighting or something, you just need to spend an afternoon going, ha, ha, grunting. <laughs> and, and, yeah. <laughs> because uh, that's all she does, and then all of a sudden she's a badass sword wielder. And I mean, I'm pretty sure the army don't teach people how to wield swords anymore. No, she's a fast learner, isn't she? <laughs> yeah, obviously she's a badass killing machine yeah hunter makes a couple of arrows out of the poison from the spider glands yeah um artemis makes quite a cool grappling hook uh, which also fires small arrows doesn't it oh shit yeah i forgot about that yeah yeah because she only uses the mechanism to fire small arrows at tins she doesn't actually use it to shoot any of the monsters with <laughs> she only uses well, it as a grappling hook later on Oh, yeah, because is that how she gets on top of the Diablo? Yeah, oh. yeah. so we'll talk about that when we come to it. Um, and then I thought it was quite cool is when they put two sword blades together to light on fire. What is that about? 
I don't know, but she didn't know either. <laughs> is that from is that from the game? She gets very surprised when she does it. Yeah. I think it's like say it's Is it I'd like probably, a power up from the game? Yeah, I'd I don't know if it's like from the game as such, but a lot of games in general where they have different elemental weapons, they have like a frost sword or a fire sword or something. Yeah. I think it's that concept of it. But she like kind of, it's almost like she does it by accident, like she doesn't realize she's like finishing, doing a little, whatever it's called, that, uh, uh, doing a little practice. <laughs> and then she puts them together and, zzz, and they just start getting hotter and she shits herself, which I would, to be fair, if I suddenly put... Imagine, imagine if you played about in the kitchen with your kitchen knives just and you just happened to touch them together and they just went red hot. Yeah. Basically. That's where I liked her reaction to it though. She was like, what? Are you not going to tell me this was meant to be happening? He's like laughing, isn't he? I think. Yeah. He's just Bait. like laugh, laughing his little box off as she's doing it. Like, ah, did you not know that was going to happen? Does that not happen in your world? No. <laughs> no, yeah. If you touch some swords together, did he not just suddenly explode into like fire? <laughs> and I mean, because <laughs> it's a normal occurrence, I'd love. Obviously, isn't it? Jesus fucking Christ. Um, they also make like a catapult, don't they, to try and distract the Diablo so they can what? make it run towards the truck where it's crashed with the RPG. What is their plan <clears throat> with the Diablo? Like, because I can't really see any kind of coherent plan. I think it's a case of just to kill it so they can get off the island. No, I get that, but like, they kind of. He. Doesn't he like stab something and it starts like dripping sand? So he sets something in yeah. motion. So it's like a giant keg yeah. full of sand. Yeah. So he knocks the bottom of it, so it starts like a like a, a timepiece. Yeah. You no know, egg timer. So it's like that. So the sand's coming off, which then release, release it, so then it'll set a catapult off to catapult another barrel of sand. And as the sand hits the desert, it'll start... I mean, as the barrel hits the sand, it'll start to roll through the desert. Were you doing all this so she could get to the rocket launch? Pretty much, yeah. Because I know, um, I know he kind of fucks it up, doesn't he, a little bit? Because uh, he he <laughs> doesn't he start running off in like a different direction. Well, he starts chasing him, but then he drops his toys. Yeah. So what happens is, um, as the distraction thing wasn't good enough for the Diablo, because it got there pretty quick. Yeah. Um, it's then heard their footsteps running towards the jeep. Then it's turned around to chase them down, and as they're running. They stop. So then Hunter says, like, I'll use bait. He shouts bait, puts his sword, like, bangs the sword down, then starts running off. So then gives her enough time to get towards the jeep. Uh, but as he's running off to make himself as bait to distract the Diablo, he drops his um, little figurines on the floor, so then he turns around for them. Could have gone back for them later on. Yeah, he? but then, again... She somehow manages to load up this minigun full of ammo, starts lacing it into the side of the Diablo, and it does nothing to it whatsoever. I know, you think she would have learned earlier on that the, literally, literally the 50 cal does fuck all to them, like we've mentioned a few times now. Yeah, absolute nothing to it. So then Diablo turns around, starts chasing after her. Um, yeah, I, I think it's like, I've really liked uh, Hunter, to be honest with you, as a character. It's just like, he takes his sword in my and goes, bait, <laughs> and runs off. <laughs> yeah, because uh, well, he manages to get on top of the Diablo, stab it through the fucking head. After, he, after he's poisoned it in the eye, he does manage to get a shot off in the eye, doesn't he? It's yeah, the but poison. The, the poison didn't actually do anything to it, no, though. didn't slow it down in the slightest. No, so their whole plan was to poison it, to then knock it out or kill it or whatever, I'll put it to sleep. And it just basically just blinked its eye. Its eyes went a bit blurry. It was just more of an was irritant, it. wasn't it? It was like if I squirted lemon into your eye, that's what it would be like. It'd, yeah. like, it'd annoy the shit out of you, but it ain't killing you or slowing you down. No. You don't love it for it. It's basically like... The... <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. To be honest, if you were in that situation, what would you have done? Because I don't know how I would have got off that island. To be fair, I probably would have made it the island in with i don't know what other plan could even be and and i certainly wouldn't think and i didn't think it would have worked anyways i didn't think that rocket launcher would work in the slightest when she even done nothing it. i mean you're gonna need some kind of like ballistic missile to take that thing down considering what we've seen so far like you say we're seeing a whole string of hand grenades 50 cal a chain gun countless uh machine gun bullets fired at it RPG in the face, an arrow, poison arrow in the eye, and he's still like, "Yeah, what? Bring it!" Yeah, I'm like, "Come on, is that all you've got? You and what fucking army?" 
Yeah, so then Hunter manages to climb on top of the Diablo. I think, I don't know if he jumps from a different platform or climbs on it. Um, and then plows his sword into the head where it has like a bit of a weak spot right down the centre. So it's picture yourself, you've put two knuckles together. Yeah. That's like the Diablo's head, the horns on each side. And it's like the centre bit where your knuckles are. That's what the skull was like. So he sticks it down into the head of it, which then hurt it. And then he swings him, swings Hunter around, and then knocks Hunter unconscious. But then Artemis thinks it'd be a great idea just to run towards it using a grapple hook. And how long is that grapple hook, by the way? Because she's like 200 yards away. This cable shoots out of her arm, which if you put 200 yards of cable wrapped up, I don't think it's going to fit on your wrist. Right? <laughs> For That's then, a so... good point. Where the hell was the rope? Yeah. It's like Scorpion from bloody Mortal Kombat. This <laughs> yeah, ro- long rope comes out of his hand. <laughs> Mate, same director. He's obviously got the idea from True. it. Yeah. Same director, yeah. He's like, fuck it, we did it. But He's then, like, are we going to do this? Are we going to film this scene? I know exactly what we're going to do. We're going to Scorpion the shit out of this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it looks pretty cool, though, when she catapults herself up onto its head because yeah. you see it like, getting whipped around as it lifts its head up. Then she gets where the sword is, and then obviously because she's like, Muscles from Brussels pushes a sword through its skull. Dude, all I was thinking was a mechanical bull. Yeah. It was like she was right on top riding a mechanical bull because he was trying to toss her off everywhere. And she held up. To be fair to her, she held on for dear fucking life. Yeah. But then it, it doesn't, it, it does chuck her off in the end, doesn't it? And it's like, another thing, fuck me. What does it take to kill this woman? Oh, that was it. That was when it died. Is that when it died? Yeah, Did yeah. Because oh, no, she him pushed that got it. Tossed off yeah, yeah, he got tossed off. But then, oh, yeah, that sounds a bit wrong, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> he got tossed off by Diablo. The poor bastard. <laughs> the poor bastard. So, uh, yeah, that comes crashing down because she's managed to stab it into the brain of Bazoom or something. Anyway. I bet there was just women out there everywhere just thinking, oh, that's it. What, women finishing a man's job. <laughs> <laughs> you can hear it now. I mean, she's been tossed off all over the place and he gets tossed off once and he's fucking asleep in corner. <laughs> <I> love, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, bloody hell, lad. Um, and then they used the thick skin of the Diablo to make a makeshift sled. And you know what I've got for the next bit now? But, so I've put Battle with Diablo, and then I've just got the next scene is just walking. Walking. It, it just literally turns into five minutes, ten minutes of just walking through the desert. That's it, just walking towards that tower that we were seeing earlier on. That's another thing I, I just wanted to ask, right? Yeah. Because a little bit later on, they're walking through the desert and they come back across where they came into the world because we what they they literally walk past where Bravo team had been yeah, burned yeah. to death. And they're heading towards that tower. But what made them go in the other direction in the first place? Because I thought they had seen the tower and was heading towards the tower to start with. So if they were heading towards the tower, mm. I, I must be wrong because obviously they've obviously gone the opposite way. Because now they're heading towards the tower. They've walked all the way back to where Bravo team were. And that's yeah. where they came in in the first place, heading towards the tower. But when they're heading towards the tower in the first place is my question. Or have I missed something? Have I misinterpreted that? No, I think you're completely right there, mate. So how are they again walking past Bravo team if, if they're heading know. now heading towards it? I, I don't know. Ah. They must have drove around in a circle for a little Maybe. bit first. That's all I can think of. Because That's a good point, though. Because I thought, I thought they'd seen this, because literally when they were in the middle of the desert, I think the tower at the beginning was like literally the only landmark. And I'm like, that's where, I thought that's where they were heading towards. Yeah. Um, yeah they eventually she... come across a little oasis, don't they, with like herbivore dinosaurs, what are there? Just before that, because, um, because Hunter's like injured, it was just one other bit that didn't make much sense to me. So uh, she's dragging him yeah. through, the, through the sand and everything like that for ages. Yeah. And um, then a sandstorm comes and she sets up a little tent over them. Yeah. And she kind of protects them from the elements and she kind of nurses him back to life. She thinks she put like an, a drip or something in his chest or something. Like anyway, he wakes up the next morning and um, she, they come out of the sand and the tent's protected them. But then they just both walk off and leave everything there. Like, wouldn't you want to pack that tent up and take it with you again, considering it just saved your life during that sandstorm? 
Yeah, possibly, yeah, because you don't know if there might be another sandstorm coming up. Yeah, because there seems to be a recurring theme of sandstorms. You'd think that if the tent that you just used to save your life that night, you'd probably want to just pack that, take, you know, just take a minute to pack that yeah, up. Yeah, just in case. Take it with you. Yeah, it makes sense, wouldn't they it? both just walk off and just leave it. What did you think about them little um, dinosaur things? The, oh, with the Oasis? Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool effect. This, to be honest, for me... This is where the film started to break down. I was enjoying the film up until this point. Yeah. Maybe just after this, basically when everyone else kind of comes back. But yeah, it was good. The watering hole yeah. and stuff like that. And it was funny, like with the whole bait thing. Bait. Yeah. Yeah. Because as Artemis starts walking towards the water, the hunter says, drink, drink, drink. Or something, or chocolate, and you're like, you can have. Yeah. So she walks over and thinks, oh, it's all right, I'm safe here. And all these are like dead friendly, grass eating dinosaurs. I'm going to be all right. <laughs> Next minute, it was like a sandworm or some shit just jumps up. <laughs> it was like a giant catfish, but coming out of the sand, but trying to yeah. eat her. Like a giant leech, wasn't it? Yeah, just... as it jumps up, nearly getting her face, like Hunter just slices it and He's like, oh shit. And starts laughing, Hunter. He's like, ha ha ha, fate. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that's what they had tea later on. They cooked it up and ate it. <laughs> Yeah, and then all of a sudden shit's going down and there's, there's <coughs> things running through the woods and stuff, the oasis and that. You see fire. the flames, don't you, coming through? Yeah, so this is where it got a little weird for me, like I say, and it got a yeah. little bit confusing. And this is where I kind of, I'll be honest, this is the part where I started to zone out a bit. Yeah. Because his, he, we kind of meet back up with his team now that fell out of the boat with yeah. the beginning. Yeah, the Admiral and everybody else. Yeah, so we come... We, you come across the admirals there, and it turns out the admiral can speak English and punches him in the face. The very nice, man. very nice of him, isn't it? Very nice welcome, yeah. Don't, yeah. What does he say? Don't thank me yet, and punches him in the face. Yeah, because just before that, though, they have like the stampede Sorry, no. coming towards them. Yeah. Um, Hunter runs off to the edge of a cliff, and then Spyglass comes swinging down out of nowhere out the trees. Yeah. Grabs him, hanging over the cliff, and then all of these like dinosaurs just stampede right off the edge. It was like, where was that big cliff anyway a second ago? So I thought it was an oasis in the middle of a desert. <laughs> but now they're on the edge of a cliff. What were they running from? Um, they were getting burnt. The dragon thing was flying in the distance. And it was um, dropping big fire bombs, blowing fire on, on all the dinosaurs. So some of them were on fire as well, panicking. Yeah. Um, running towards them. Then you have Admiral and Artemis with two swords that were on fire. Just waving them about so the dinosaurs are diverting left and right past them and not crushing them. So they got out of that situation. And then, like, say, Admiral Chimp um, gives a good little hillbilly kiss. Admiral knocks Chimp. Knocks her out. <laughs> hillbilly kiss. <laughs> little love tap. <laughs> yeah, a little bit of a love tap. And then, then she wakes up. Later on, and she's uh, getting whistled at by Spyglass, and she's locked up in a cage. I know. Where, yeah. Where's the trust, man? Did uh, did um, did the hunter not like vouch for it? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Or does he just not have the authority? Because he, you think he just turns out like he's the cleaner on the boat, like just the Roger the cabin boy. Just being racist now, aren't you? Why? Because they use a lot of Thai and Malaysian people on cruise boats for cleaners. Well, I didn't know that. So no, I'm not. I'm just saying like <laughs> he obviously has no authority with these people because otherwise he would have been like, nah, I've vouched for it. That's a true thing, by the way. <laughs> it's not just what he said. It's what he said. That's true. Yeah, they're not uh, cruise ships. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it's obviously cheap labour, isn't it, for um, like Malaysian and Thai people. A lot of them are on the um, cruise ships and stuff. Ah. Well, no, that's, that's not the point I'm getting at, to be fair. I was just saying that he obviously has zero fucking influence with any of his team because... Oh, I love he, stitching you up. I know. He gets punched in the face and um, and ends up in prison, but she, she manages to get out. And then the, what the fuck is with that cat? I loved it. I thought it was well funny. Well, it's I mean, this is it chef. Just, it just <laughs> starts getting wackier and wackier, wackier, and then she comes across, I, I like, and like a cat, but like as a human, a human cat. Let's say this: someone's fucked a cat, basically. Right, they've done a life-size human-style cat better than cats. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doubting that it looked it's not cool, didn't it? It did look pretty cool. It did, but it, it turned was just out the cat is absolutely the ship's chef. It was just the cook. It was just fucking weird. Was weird. Is all. I wasn't like like I say. Up until this point, 
the film had been quite good. It'd been quite almost like it'd been quite gritty and kind of, you know, they they were building a bond together and all stuff like that. You know, Artemis and the Hunter yeah. and shit like that. And then all of a sudden, it's like these people have come along and there's a fucking cat as a cook. And they, I think they even say to her, "What do you not have cats in your world?" Yeah, it does. It's like, yeah, we do, but they don't look like that. Oh, no. I mean, they don't look like James fucking Gordon's retarded cousin playing a cat. No, I did like the bit, though, when it came and brought Admiral with the drink. He's like, have you been drinking out of my drink? Yeah, and the cat's like, Meow. Oh, shit, yeah, I forgot about <laughs> that. Out of the out of his cup. <laughs> yeah. And then we get a little bit of an info dump from the Admiral, who tells us everything about the tower and there's monsters what guard in it and it's supposedly you... some magical powers what are Can on you there. explain it to me? Because again, I zoomed, zoned, zoomed. I zoned out at this point. So when I was kind of watching it, I was kind of like, I don't get why they're attacking the tower or why the tower... Because isn't it doesn't the tower have something to do with the portals and the yes. way it's dragging people into this world? Yeah. So please, if you can, if you can explain it to us. I'll, I'll try my best. Because uh, like I say, it was about a week and a half ago when, we actually, when I actually watched it and I've glanced over it again like this week, just glanced it. Um, so what I can remember correctly is um, there's like a group of... They shamans are monks, but were really powerful, and they were able to harness the energy from the lightning and the storms uh, using the tower to make portals between their world and our world. Um, and they had these dragons as guards to protect anybody else coming to use the power or attack them. But they died off a long time ago, but the portals have been a bit... Um, unhinged lately. Do you say dragons plural? As in, yeah, more than one. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of them. So, do we know why they were making the portal? Or, um, it's something to do like harnessing the energy or something. I got. So, were they heading? Was like Monkey Man and and um, the Hunter and that? Were they heading to this tower in the first place? What? What? Why were they heading towards it? Because it's been unstable. It's been affecting their world somehow. yeah because he because uh monkey man speaks english because he says that he's come across people from her world before doesn't he? yeah yeah and, and he wants ma- to try and keep them both separate yeah he does it he wants to stop our world destroying their world but the only world he can the only way he can protect his world is by going to the tower and basically stabilizing it so it's not as unstable making so what- these random portals what was their plan to stabilize it? Did he? Do we know this? No, <laughs> no, he doesn't really this, tell us that. Because again, this is where I kind of started kind of losing a bit of interest because I was kind of like, so it was. It was almost like they've done in quite a, other, quite a lot of the other films where we kind of run on this list where they just start trying to wrap it up as quickly as possible and they don't really explain shit. Yeah, because the, the very next scene is pretty much the next morning and the crew going hunt for the tower on the island, and. I think the scenery effects look quite good. Um, but why was the only six of them that went, not the whole crew? Yeah, that's a, that's a good shout. That is a good shout. But again, the was... next scene is the next day. They're on the island where power is, where they've got to then walk off to go to wherever it is. Because on that time, I missed something. There wasn't really a plan. The only <laughs> thing we kind of get explained, if I remember rightly, is that when they're talking about the dragon, they say that it's, it's weakest just before it sets off its flame yeah when it opens its mouth to produce the flame you can see um like the oils or liquids in its mouth like forming before it gets ignited to make the flame yeah but that's its weakest point there was no inkling of a plan or exactly how they were planning to kind of stop the portal or anything like that or why it was haywire or why these shamans even created something that could go between worlds was there so i didn't i didn't miss something no, not really. No, I just see, said. Because I get the impression it. that this they wanted this kind of this film to go into like a kind of series of spin off. May, maybe, like I said, I've not played the video game, so maybe the, it's explained more in the video games as to what these portals are. And I, think, I, I didn't play it too much. I played like say ten hours of it, or something when I did play it. But I, the logist that I got of it was like, I remember you going around. There was a couple of these like shipwreck style islands um and you had like different vendors and stuff and they give you missions to go off and find say like a certain type of monster what has a certain type of skin what might be worth like leather or 
from a bit more harder. Then you break it down and make different weapons or different armors, and then you can sell them off and stuff. Kind of fight bigger monsters. And yeah, go. yeah, yeah. So you can like upgrade your character and that. So if if you're out there and you played the games, if you wouldn't mind kind of like leaving us a comment if you're on YouTube just to let us know if uh, what the backstory is to these towers, whether it is explained in the games, whether it is part of the games, because it's left it's left me particularly feeling a bit baffled as to why because it just to me it just felt like from this point he was he was almost a bit rushed it was like let's go and do this tower yeah. why i don't know because was well, to get to the tower itself yep. uh the see signs of the what they call is the raffalos is, is, is that the the dragon the thing dragon. Yeah, yeah yeah the big huge dragon thing um that has a bit of like his head it's like a big dragon thing isn't it but his face and that look more looks more like uh, a hawk or some sort doesn't it like some style of bird, because that's like a beak oh, type yeah, thing, doesn't it? Does it? A bit, face. Does a bit. Looks pretty yeah. cool, but I'll still put a picture up there for you where it looks like. Yeah, I think the, I think they're looking <coughs> at it in a book as well, if I remember rightly, and it shows you like a picture. They have like a diagram of the head and stuff. Yeah, I think because I, I think they are giving a bit of a backstory on it, but they don't explain very much to it. So anyway, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. So, uh, a big huge thunderstorm happens and the rain starts as the fight. Of course, of course. No, the uh, the little tropey thing, isn't it? Yeah. So it has to it has to be rain, you know. Yeah. Um, Spyglass Gill is using the spyglass to look for the dragon. I mean, wouldn't that hinder your visibility a little bit by looking through some tiny little thing? Mm, probably. Why it's a, like a forty or fifty foot dragon flying around you? Yeah, I'd probably maybe wait till like yeah. know, you see the breathing of fire. That probably would give That's it away it. of where it is. And as only six of them went, we only noticed the camera zoomed on the main four people, which was <laughs> Ginge, Spyglass, Admiral um hunter and artemis so then five then the other two people there's no blurry in the background the cannon fodder i call them they got set on fire straight away i was gonna they? say they got charred pretty much straight off the bat didn't they as yeah. soon as they arrived it was like because obviously we need they need to show what the the dragon can do so yeah. what better way than to take a bit if they're in let's let's put it this way if you're in star trek they'd be red shirts yes the red shirt people yeah. that is that then um i thought it was really cool fight scene to be honest with you, I really liked it, um, especially with Admiral Chimp as he's running with his um, sword. As he hits the sword on the ground, so if you put like a bit of a clip on it, as he hits it down, it, it generates like a huge fireball at the dragon. I thought that, that looked absolutely so cool. Yeah, the, the visuals again, again, yeah. you can't you can't fault the visuals on it. It was amazing, uh, I thought. Really, really good. All I remember is that shit went down. There was a little bit of a fight, but then somehow she ends up going back through a portal, did not she? Yeah. So Ginge and Spyglass both run straight at the dragon. Yeah. That gets wiped out. Um, Does Admiral Spyglass gets... die? Yeah. What? Spyglass die, yeah. Um, I think they just got knocked out or something. Or knocked right. over. It just pretty much just knocked them. It didn't burn them or anything. Yeah. Um, then Artemis is the only one, because obviously she's banging the director, who can go toe-to-toe with the dragon. So literally everyone else is getting wiped out, right? Because she's, she's getting her filling off, uh, <laughs> off the director. She's the only one who can actually stand there toe-to-toe and slice this dragon. Oh, Jesus. To the point where she slices part of its wing, slices its kneecaps, and it picks its toes, gives it a pedicure. And then as... Dragon's about to get her. It gets distracted by Admiral Chimp. And then she runs towards the edge of the tower. And she sees, like, the portal open up. And a big fireball comes out of the dragon. About yeah. to kill her. But then she falls through the portal. So she jumps off the cliff, doesn't she, through yeah. the portal? How does she survive that fall? Yes. That is my next question. Go on. Right. When she fell through the portal, how did she not die? She fell out of the sky and hit the ground as if she's been parachuting without the parachute. Yeah. Honestly, it's just like, yeah. Because the other thing as well is, if I remember right, don't like the entire like battalion of army guys kind of come to a raid out of nowhere. Exactly. Where did they come from? Why did they send? They literally sent tanks and everything. They had like guys like a guy in the sky playing with the big dish and that on the top, all around everywhere. So they, they did, didn't they? Yeah, they had like. Yeah. One of them airplanes with the huge like cannons that you see in like Call of Duty. Call of Duty, yeah. And then you had about five or six big helicopters, tanks, Humvees, the whole them platoons. Helicopter planes, and they were like they turn into like they've got propellers and the... from the sixth day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Who's yeah. on it? <laughs> Who's on the controller? <laughs> He's on the sidelines with his remote control. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But um, I was wondering, like, so she's come through the portal and then mm. all of a sudden Dave just on her. Like, and it's just like, how did they... Do you think, do you think, it's, do you think they've cottoned on at this point that the storm's happening every 10 minutes and like, some shit's going down? I don't know, but it's bloody great timing to have the whole bloody army there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just and for... then as well, what did they do? I don't know if you remember... But the throw the tire up and put her into a like stretcher. But the tire onto the stretcher, but she can't move. She's like a nut, nutty job patient. And then they put her into the back of the helicopter. Helicopter starts flying off, and then the dragon comes through the portal, yeah. smashes the front half of the plate, the, the helicopter. That falls thirty thousand feet out of the sky. She's strapped up, can't move, but yet <laughs> lands perfectly fine. Oh, dude. On the stretcher, I don't know how, how I can't remember how she actually got out the stretcher. Again, she can't move her arms or legs. It's just because she's banging the director, mate. She cannot die in this film. She cannot die. Honestly, this bloody dragon is going round, right? He's blowing up choppers, tanks, destroying them instantly. Meanwhile, Artemis is looting dead bodies from it and trying to get a new watch. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Because if, if I remember rightly, so there's, there's a fucking like. There's a full-on tank there for some reason. Yeah. It's come, come on a rescue mission, a fucking tank. And the I f- I f- doesn't the dragon come, go over to it, like rip it apart like it's made of polystyrene and it's yeah. a kid's toy? It literally rips the top of the gun off. And then it flies up into the air. It takes down a fucking jet. And it basically, it's like, it's like everything. Think, think of something that's, think of an army vehicle. And it, this thing was, they were there for some reason. And this dragon took it out like it was nothing. But then somehow, Artemis, who's just survived two massive falls, like you say, one of them attached to a fucking stretcher. Yeah. I mean, how is she not dead? It is, it is madness, isn't it? And I don't know if you noticed it, but the scale, it goes a bit off on this. Right? Because Wendy was in the other world. Yeah. Right? She was stood up. She's, say, six foot. She's quite tall for a bird, right? She's about six foot. <laughs> this thing is about 25, 30 foot. Okay, and he comes into our world. It latches on the front of the helicopter, and the helicopter looks really small when it lands on top of it. Yeah, it starts flying around, destroying all these tanks, and then she thinks, you know what? It's bulletproof. It's been hit by these tank shells. It's been hit by this giant plane and stuff, cannons and whatever you can think of RPGs, right? Laser guided missiles and all this shit. She thinks, oh, do you know what this needs to do to kill it? A grappling hook. So yeah, the dragon is him. literally there. You see her running towards the dragon, and she looks like an ant now. So this dragon thing has tripled in size, even though it was really big. She's like the size of an ant, uses this catapult thing. You see like a tiny little thing flying up, lands on top of it, or lands next to it, and basically, I put it, she looked like bloody Ant-Man climbing around on the wing. <laughs> right? And then she starts slicing the wing. And then... She slices down it like a yeah. sail, doesn't she? Yeah, so she slides down it like some pirate on a bloody ship's sail. Because this thing has survived, like, shells from tanks, like you say, countless bullets, countless, yeah. like, 50 cal rounds, the, the plane, but yeah, she can somehow grapple up there with her imaginary get over here rope. Yeah. And then slice down, like you say, like a sail. How how does that even... And she also slices it up in a little bit. Because um, you see it umping up, and a firebomb goes into its mouth as it's about to breathe, and then kills it. So then it collapses down, and then obviously it's back to like being 30 foot, and she's like 6 foot type of thing. And then just as we think it's dead, it comes up for one last stand, you know, as they do, she needs to shoot him in the head or something, don't you? Like, scream. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shoot him in the, the head, yeah. The killer always comes back. <laughs> <laughs> so it jumps back up, and until one arrow hits it, and we see Hunter has came into the realm to finish it off. And this guy made Robin Hood look like an amateur. That was a bloody great shot, that. Robin Hood who? Yeah, that's it. Um... Do you notice Amsus wasn't even phased that the dragon just killed 50 people over her own army? I just can't get over, like, what kind of goddamn complex must this woman have to think that it just took out a fucking battalion of men with tanks. Not just men, like, the army. I'm not just saying it's because it's men. 
Well, but again, it army. is the American army. Yeah, the fact that they didn't kill each other with a bit of blue on blue, you know, is is surprising to begin with. But tanks, planes, trains, automobiles, the I I think at one point there was just a shitload of, like Humvees flying along and this this yeah. this dragon yeah. was having the time of its fucking life. But she somehow manages to take it down with a sword and a grappling hook. Okay, the only, and a little help from my friends. Your only explanation and the benefit of the doubt I'll give them, right, is maybe quite possibly these mythical beasts can only be killed or hurt by using their weapons from that world. Maybe, for example, maybe. the elemental swords and stuff. Because when oh. she was slicing it, it looked like it was doing damage to the wing and its knee caps are giving her a pedicure. But the bullets and the RPG was doing yeah. nothing for them. Maybe, maybe, maybe. That's the only benefit the doubt will give them. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, if you give, if you if you're looking at it in that sense, then you know they're not from this world. So yeah, yeah. May, maybe, maybe. But then we see but, another portal it, lumping up. Then don't we? Oh, well, I was just gonna say as well. Just it's just a whole thing about you know all she's done is she's been in that world. What a, a couple, let's let's say a week tops. She's done a little bit of training with that guy where she spent an afternoon swinging swords about and stuff like that. I wouldn't even say a week. I'd say three days. Three days. Yeah, I, mean, I was like, I was being generous, yeah. uh, exaggerating a little bit, but no, no, well, three days, no more than a week. Um, she's literally spent, we've seen one little montage of that. Most, she spent more time in the desert dragging that guy along than she did training. Yeah, all of a sudden she's this badass hunter that can t- take down pretty much single-handedly a fucking dragon. I yep. mean, I mean the fact that they even when they were on the boat, they even took them with her to try and take this thing down in the first place was a bit of a far fetch, yeah, kind of thing. But I just don't buy it. The whole the whole kind of arc behind her. I know she was just like this kind of ranger, but I mean, she wasn't anything special as far as I could think. No. And then all of a sudden, she she all of a sudden, she, yeah, fair enough. She knows she knows hand to hand combat, she knows a bit of kung fu, and yeah, they, by some luck, they managed to take down the Diablo. But then the Ross, it's almost like now, what, is she some kind of badass fucking monster hunter? Because I just I just don't buy it is what I'm getting at. Mm. I'm going a long fucking way around it, but I just don't buy it. Yeah, I get it, man. I get it. The story arc just isn't there for me to believe, hands down, that she is capable of doing this. When yeah. I'm... Yeah, then we see another portal lumping up, don't we, at the end. And yeah. we see a similar dragon, but it's not as big. It's like a different type of dragon. That's why I was saying there's like different type of ones, because this one looks a little bit different. He gives a um, baby dragon. Yeah, so that comes flying down, and we have Admiral Chimp, Hunter, and Artemis, three Power Rangers, best friends, <laughs> um, just basically run towards it. Three different elemental weapons as well, if you notice. Um, yeah, yeah. And as the jump in the air, it finishes. Yeah. Credits roll. And then that's... That's the end. The end. That's all for that. That's kind of where they've. Oh, it's almost like they kind of left it open, like they're gonna kind of. Te- it's gonna be a continuation from there. Yeah, definitely a sequel. Which, like I say, from from the first hour of this film was good. Yeah, I enjoyed it, but the last forty five minutes, from when they meet the rest of the people and so mm. on, and then it just feels rushed. Um, I, I I think it's almost like because we we suddenly introduce to all these characters that we don't give a fucking shit about. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. You don't get to know. What's well, wrong? The whole film is an hour and forty minutes, right? Yeah. I reckon from the bit where they get to the oasis to the end, probably about half hour. And that's it. And it's just like kind of this Ron Perlman comes along, and it's almost to me it almost felt like oh now we have to give a shit about this guy because he's more famous than some of the other cast. Maybe. Other than Mila, mm. he's probably the most well known out of all the cast, other than her. Um, and it's like, oh, now we have to give a shit about him. Yeah. And it's like, but there's no kind of backstory as to who he is, other than he's a bit of a dick who punches him in the face, yes. and he looks like a fucking monkey. Yeah. But it just felt, it just felt a bit forced, and I think from that point on, it was just like they were just rushing to try and wrap the film up, and they were like, right, how do we explain the portal? How do we explain the tower? And we kind of want to leave it open. Or a sequel, yeah, like they're trying to was. make some kind of, yeah, like, they, like, like they've done with the video games where they kind of want to make it into like probably the next one would have been Monster Hunter World or something, yeah, probably, yes, yeah, it would have been more in their realm, wasn't it? Trying to do it, okay, 
Well, let's give the answer to the clip quiz that we give yeah. at the start of the episode. So if you do know it, let us know down below. But don't be cheating. Don't be, you know, wait until the end and then write it down. Say, you know, I knew what it was all along. Lilu Dallas Multipass. Yeah. Multipass. Lilu, uh, multipass. You know this multipass. Lilu Dallas, my wife. We're newlyweds. Just met. Multipass. You know how it is. Bump into each other. Sparks multipass. happen. Yeah, she knows it's a multipass. Yeah, anyway, we're in love. What do you reckon? Fifth element. No. You mean no? Of course it was. <laughs> Amazing film, that. Great film, isn't it? Yeah. Bloody hell. Uh, Bruce Willis, uh, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker in that film, mate. Ah, man. Ah, man. man. What you want, man? <laughs> Coleman Dennis. <laughs> yeah, Jesus great film. Christ. Absolutely love it. I've not seen that for a while. Big bada boom. When was the last time you seen that film? Gary oh, Oldman geez. as well, isn't it? Yeah. Legend of an actor, him. I know, right? He's got some good range, you know. Let's give the awards out then, short we? First yeah, of all, let us know as well are the awards. Who would you give what award? Eric, um, do you want to let us know how they can contact us? Yeah, so you can uh, like, comment, subscribe. If you're on Spotify, please leave us that five-star review. And if you want to get in contact with us, you can email us at sixandbelowpodcast at gmail.com. First of all, we have got... The awards, what we are giving out by the way, I'll just run through them quickly. We've got the best actor, worst actor, best character, worst character, three things you liked about the film, and IMDb rating. <laughs> right, okay, first of all, let's get on with the best actor award. Yeah, that's right, you better walk away. Go on, walk away, because I'm going to burn this motherfucker down. King Kong ain't got shit on me. Right. He got shit on Denzel, mate. Who's your best actor award? Right, so I'm completely unprepared for this. Um, I've not prepared anything beforehand, so I'm kind of winging it. It's that two weeks, you know, guys. Two weeks to do this. You can fuck right off. I have had two weeks, to be fair. Yeah, we had to cancel last week. Yeah. Um, it's been a quick week, hasn't it? It has been a quick week. Uh, it'd have to be Mila, to be honest, because like, I think she was the only worthwhile actress or actor in it. Yeah. Uh, honourable shout to Tony Jar. Yeah. Um, I think that was his name, wasn't Hunter, it? Hunter, yeah. Yeah, Hunter. Uh, but yeah, Mila, uh, considering throughout the whole thing, she was the only one who actually spoke English. And there was only two of them. So to get a good chemistry between the two characters when they don't speak the same language, and there's only two of them throughout pretty much all the film, I think it done really well, to be fair. It was going to be one of them, to yeah. be honest, but I think she <coughs> kind of... I th she's the better actress. Yeah, 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 I think she's done really well, to be fair. Uh, worst Actor Award, the AKA Golden Seagull. I'm going to take you to the bank, Senator Trent. To the blood bank. Right, Mr. Whisper himself. Golden Seagull. Well, on, you go first on this one. Who's your worst actor? Um, do you know what? I've gone first some of the army guys at the end. Have you? Yeah, I think there's one in particular in a helicopter. It's just where uh, the dragon thing just landed on a helicopter. She's like... <laughs> <laughs> just wasn't like, giving it his best, no. Go on. You could you could do a bit of a better performance tonight. You got some big dragons ripping shit out of your co-pilot, burning everybody around, and you're like, oh, happening. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, how about yourself? Uh I've gone for TI. Yeah? Yeah, I just thought he was a bit Was it the part when he was inside the cave when he was completely silent and snuck up onto it and then just wouldn't show up? To be honest, yeah, it wasn't. Ah, 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 ah. It wasn't until you kind of recap my memory on that that I thought, yeah, he's just. I just he, he comes across where, like, like I say, he keeps appearing in all these films, but he <laughs> never. He's not, I'm sorry, mate, if you're out there and you ever do watch this, but you're not a very good actor. Yeah, it's not and too bad. He's not the worst I've ever seen, but he's not. He certainly isn't the best. Yeah, he wasn't the best in there. Perfect. Okay, your best character. Um, I'd have to give it the hunter. I've gone for the same. Yay. All right. He was good. He was good. You wouldn't have had the phone about that. Oh, worst character. Who's your worst character? Monkey Mum. Oh, Admiral. He was pretty pointless, to be fair. There weren't many characters in it, to be fair, but out of all of them, I'd probably say he was the worst. Okay, I've gone for Dash. Which one was Dash now? So, Dash was the army chick. Which is meant to be a oh. badass army ranger. The bird out of Shazam. The one out of Shazam who got everybody distracted and killed 
because she couldn't pull it together. Because of her, her whole team that was remaining, the last four of them, all got killed because of her. I'll give you, I'll give you that one. Yeah, fuck me. Yeah, yeah, because she, she, yeah, because the first sign of trouble and she fucking broke down like a little bitch. Yeah, and then because all the attention went onto her, Artemis was doing the big speech. She got caught from behind, and then everybody else ran off. They didn't see the ambush coming from the spiders, and then you know, gone off. Yeah, good shout. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't think they would have stood much of a chance either way. <clears throat> but they would have got a little bit more of a heads up. They would have seen it coming. Yeah, they might have lasted an extra five minutes before they died. Another one could have survived. Well, yeah, I suppose. You know what I mean, yeah. um, three things you liked about it. Uh, <laughs> wasn't that bad? Come on. No, it wasn't. No. <laughs> um, we said it throughout. I've got to give it to the visuals. Yeah, it's some of the best CGI I've seen. Yeah, I liked the first half, the first hour. It was going well. It yeah. was just let down. Um, what else? Set design. Although there was a lot of CGI in the monsters, it looked like they were on on location somewhere. What, in the desert? In the desert. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Let me see what you come up with, dickhead. Okay, I put the CGI for the monsters. I thought it was fantastic. Um, good Copy fight scenes. Me. Yeah, I thought the uh, choreography was good. Um, when it was the actual two people fighting each other, I thought it was quite good. Uh, and I enjoyed the fight scene with the dragon. Yeah, it's probably It was yeah. good. Both fight scenes with the dragon, to be honest, especially when it was in the monster world, where it was like slow motion with the rain coming down. She's got fire swords. It just looked really cool. Yeah, no, it was good. Yeah, the fight scenes were good, yeah. I wish I had chose that rather than the desert. Yeah. I like the desert. <laughs> oh, God. I like the desert, you know. I like the desert. <laughs> but no, the... right, let's but no on so if there's one thing you've got to take away from this film, is the CGI was... Oh, it was fantastic, wasn't it? Okay. Where are we going to stick it on the wall? One to skip. Really? I don't see the point in watching this film, to be honest, because it, it's obvious that they were going to try and make it into like a kind of um, kind of franchise, but it, it's clearly not worth it. <clears throat> um, I think it was worth a watch. I, I think, think it you... was 100% worth a watch. Like you say, there's more good than what was bad out of it overall. The CGI <sighs> and everything like that, the visual effects were good. Fair, fair enough, the dialogue wasn't really there, but there's only two people, so it can only be carried so far from dialogue. The action really, was good. really think, though, that it was worth a watch. I think it was, yeah. I, I don't know, because like, I'm not saying want to skip as a bad thing. I just don't feel, I, I just don't feel like it's, it's <clears throat> worth a watch. It's definitely not must-see. I don't think it's, no, no, I won't I say don't think it's worth away. going out and having a watch, because, like I say, it feels like it's a setup for a failed franchise that could have been, but isn't going to be because. But you're basing that on, like, say, the franchise thing. You got to look at it as a standalone film. But even as a standalone film, the first the first hour is good, but it's just let down by that last bit, and it does let it down. And the fact that it's based on a video game, it would it would have been better if it was kind of a completely standalone film and not based on a video game, if they'd just come up with some original material. And even they could have even still called it Monster Hunter and stuff like that, but I've just made a film that wasn't based on the video game. Like, they're trying to, they're trying to tie it in with the video game and get the fans from the video yeah. game. And I, it does feel like they're almost trying to set it up at the end for another franchise, and it fails. Okay, so, so kind of going off the trailer of yeah. what you've seen before you watched it, Right? Yeah, and you're flicking through, guy, whatever, like channel hopping at the moment, right? And you come across this, would you stop and watch it? Probably not. No, no. I, it, I knew about the film beforehand, and it's, it's, it's not interested me. But that's just my opinion. But yeah, I don't know. It's, it's not a bad film. It's not a bad film. So maybe, yeah, maybe it is worth a watch. Okay, I, then you got to compare it. Then would you say it was better it? than Under Siege Two? <laughs> yeah, it was better than Under Siege too. Was it better than The Sixth Day? No. No! CGI-wise, definitely. Story-wise, no. Would you say it was better than Time Cop? No. Time Cop was good, and to be fair, wasn't it? I love Time Cop. It's always a shit film. All right, is it. it better than Fred Claus? Yeah. Well, there you go. It's Only because it's... What, so it's like... <clears throat> Watch this or watch a Vince Vaughn film, which I fucking hate and I didn't think was needed to be on worth of watching the slightest. Fucking hate Vince Vaughn, guys. Um, <laughs> you just answered your question then. That's the way I do it, right? Because I look, I look at that list there, what we've got, right? 
then I say, okay, is it better than Double Impact? Well, yes. Is it better than Under Siege? Yes. Is it better than Beethoven? No. So then I'll go back. Is it better than Six Day? Yes. No, you can't. Is it better than Jingle All The Way? Probably not. No, because what you got, what well, the way I look at it is, I'm saying to people out there, is it worth you spending time to go and watch this film? And to me, it's a no. I know, but then at the same time, you're telling people to go and watch Under Siege too. <laughs> you can see where I'm coming from. Sometimes, Darren, I hate you. <laughs> Fine, put it in fucking worth a watch, but I'm not happy about it. I personally, I I could have gone the rest of my life without watching that. Okay, film. what would you I've give it out of ten? Out of 10? Yeah. I've gone for 6.2. 5.7 maybe, a push. 5.7. Based on what I've seen, I wouldn't mind if they'd made a sequel. I'd like to see where it kind of goes yeah, and yeah. to see a bit more of the world and where they were going to take it. So I wouldn't mind if they'd made a sequel. But as a standalone film on its own, I feel like the beginning of it was really good, but the last the last half an hour of it was like they were building up to something to happen next in the... In the in, yeah, in a sequel of film, in a, like a franchise of films, which I would have been happy to watch the next one, having done that. Would you say it was better than Rebel Moon? Yes. Yeah. Again, with that film, the the CGI and so on was good, and and because I know when ne- the next film is coming along, I I am still intrigued, even though Rebel Moon was was itself a bit of a letdown. I'm intrigued to see where the next one goes. I'll be honest with Rebel Moon. I'm not interested in the second one. Are you know? No, it didn't. Didn't hit the marks enough to I, make me eager for the next one. To be honest, I kind of the only reason I kind of want to watch the next one is to try and make the watching the first one worthwhile. <laughs> to make it feel like there was a reason. Justifiable. Yeah, to make it to, there's a reason I fucking sat through two hours of that film was to maybe just sit in the hope that they make something better out the next one. Now they've got all the shite out the way. Hopefully, it'll have just left room for the next a good one. Yeah. And that's what this one maybe could have been, in a way. Although I'm saying that when we do meet these characters, it did kind of... It, Last it, half hour let it, it down. It kind of... It, it's not so... It's hard to explain because it's not so much that it let it down. It just, to me, it kind of changed the dynamic of the whole film. It kind of started... It turned it into something else. Yeah. It went from being a more serious, we're stuck in this fucking world kind of thing, to then there being a fucking catcher. If that kind of sums it up. And I know at the very beginning we see them on this ship and sailing through the fucking desert and you see the band of weirdos and led by the monkey man and so on. But I kind of, like I said, I kind of forgot about that because it happens very, right at the start, it only lasts like a minute, very brief. But then as soon as we get like the army guys coming into the world and kind of exploring the the whole monster situation and seeing like bravo team being destroyed and then seeing that fucking giant diablo come out of the sand and shit like that that was brilliant then the spiders come in and them going through the caves and you know are they dead and they're not dead the fucking ti with all these spiders coming out the fucking fringe worthy of that then meeting the hunter yeah but, but then all that brilliant brilliant it was leading somewhere it felt like it was gonna it was it felt almost like gritty and then it just turned into something yeah it's almost like they remembered oh shit no this is supposed to be based on a video game let's make it kind of gamey and weird yeah in a way but i get you i mean i respect your opinion on that one yeah so that 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 was kind of my take on the film right okay do you let well, yeah us know well i'll wrap it up watching. there i think i've made my point yeah do you um, let us know what we're watching next week yeah so next week we're doing another van damme film because we seem to love van damme film well like you say believe it or not we've got a super computer here at six and below <laughs> and we've got literally how many was it 90 yeah nine, 99 films we've got 99 films number 69 came out and it happened to be a street fighter with van damme street fighter so we're gonna get jcbd's <laughs> ass in the moonlight again with some cheesy one-liners with kylie minogue looking pretty fit actually in this yeah so kylie kylie minogue i, I was thinking fuck me kylie minogue is an actress but then i remembered that she kind of did start as an actress in neighbors didn't she yeah so yeah. Going going back to her roots and full circle. Um, yeah, but anyway, on but IMDb yeah. it is rated four, four, so it's gonna be our second lowest film that we've reviewed on this. Um, Dragon, Dragon Ball Evolution is the lowest one at two point five. That's another one that was we've done that was based on a um, 
Uh, is that based on a video game? Uh, oh, no, no, it was an anime, anime wasn't it? Sorry, yeah, anime mistake, it was. Yeah. Um, that but... was a shit film. Okay, guys, we're going to yeah. wrap it up. So you can join you us next week. Very for much for joining us. We really do appreciate all the support, all the help, and everything else. And if you are new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe. If you're on YouTube, hit the five star rating. If you are on one of the Spotify or any third party podcasting platforms out there, it really does mean a lot. So thank you very much for everything. Yeah, thank you guys. And we'll, uh, we'll catch you next week for uh, Street Fighter. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to contact you. us, how can you do it? Oh, sorry. I was about to salute uh, Let me just put that back. Um, Six and below podcast at gmail.com. Yep. And if you want to let us know in the comments as well, if there's a film that is below six out of 10 on IMDb or below 60% on Rotten Tomatoes, let us know down below and we will stick it on our list or give it a review. Yes, unless your name's Leanne, in which case you can fuck right off with your Twilight. <laughs> Twilight part two. Yeah. Anyone recommends Twilight, it's not, it doesn't count. Well, Twilight we've done already and that was a 5.3. Well, we're not doing any more. Not We've got another for, six more to do. Not not this year. <laughs> not this year. Maybe next year. We'll look at 2025 for that one. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Take care, guys.